Hello, everybody. I was, you know, I've been looking for, because if you've noticed on the channel, there's been a lot of, I've been doing a lot of heavy stuff recently, and that is going to continue because I have a very heavy uh, project that I've been working on. Why isn't the chat working? Why is chat not... Hmm. No. Nope. My hair looks all kinds of crazy today. I am. Say Gex. Oh, hello. How is everybody else doing today? Stealing. Stealing's doing good. And this is this is gonna be an interesting um, experiment because I have never tried streaming and playing a game on my PC. know why the chat is not working. What the hell, man? Alright, but let's see. Jen Scarlet, how many trans women or drag queens were on Epstein Island? No matter how hard I look, I can't find any. Uh, you know, hard to say. Hard to say. Uh, no, Jen Scarlet, actually not all old white dudes. Chris Tucker was there at one point. Hello, MC Fractal. All right, let me get... see this what the hell oh you know what I'm gonna try let's actually try I'm trying to find a way to capture the video from the thing I might just have to do it from don't want to do screen capture although I guess I could Sham Rockstar, thank you very much. All right. <clears throat> Is 
Is this asymmetrical multiplayer? No. Um, so this is... And Mockingbird, you're probably right. Like I said, I wanted to, uh, or like I was saying at the beginning, I have had a just glut of incredibly hard, strenuous projects. And I feel like this week especially, everything we've taken on in the uh, chat and on stream has been rough, rough stuff to go through. Um, and so I wanted to, not that this is gonna be easier to go through, but it's not gonna be as bad, I don't think. Sorry, that was probably loud. Uh, thank you very much, King Ivan, for subscribing with Prime. Scarlet Unscripted, thank you for resubscribing for five months, five months of fun. I am, I appreciate it all so much, you guys. Uh, Starcats, if you're still in here, thank you for following. And so, and because I have a massive big project, like I mentioned, I have a uh, another infiltration project that I'm working on that will be this next week. I wanted to do something fun on Friday. And Benny Johnson has a stupid thing coming out that will be also probably fun to look at. Uh, let me see if there's a multiplayer. Oof. Uh, audio things. We have a... Oh, no, doesn't, does it test? It's not going to my audio. Okay, there we go. Now it's, for some reason, it was going to something else entirely. Okay. Oh, there's like a Oblivion type soundtrack behind this. Okay. Let me turn my vaporwave music off. Uh, Patrick, do no, it's uh, Benny Johnson has a um. John Bainbridge, you you saw it correctly. You saw it correctly. It is uh, Epstein the video game. This released today, on oh I forgot I have my. Right before it went out, because I'm like, man, I need a, I need a, chill out. So I got some fresh made pork gyoza from my favorite sushi spot. Um, ooh, and chopsticks. Thank you. And some, I, I went for bubble tea, but then I was like, I should probably eat something today, and I should probably have some protein. So, pure gyoza, it is. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to make my video a little bit bigger. Uh, like, how do I say this? I don't want to give this too much, like, legitimacy, because there's, oh, uh, Shawnee P, I'm almost certain, dog, come on now, come on now. Dog is digging through the sushi bag now. All right, I'm gonna move it to the kitchen. And I apologize for my unkempt appearance today. Um, this popped up on Steam yesterday, today. No, it popped up on Steam today. After, you know, it had been teased for a little while. Explosive donut, what does your mom uh, shirt say? Mommy something? It says, I want my mommy. Is my, is my shirt. It's my Carlock shirt. Dog says hello, also. Hello. Hello. We have widescreen today, so Doggo can be on camera. Hey, stop it, sit, sit, no, gross, dog domain, um, any tips on getting writing Scarlet Unscripted, nope, I would always, I just say, get yourself writing, write something, you, you don't have anything to edit, 
until you you write it down. Uh, Storm Fire Twister, thank you very much for following. King Menelus, uh, I got it from Etsy. I think you can you can still go and and look it up. I'm I'm sure it's pretty easy to find on there. The game is AI slop. I'm very curious to see how much of it is AI assets, if if any. I know there is uh, on the Steam page like the cover and everything is AI. So let's just get right into it. An angry goose in Twitch saying, this game is brought to us by, <clears throat> excuse me, the creators of G-Verse, an early access MMO that hasn't been updated in a year, that tracks, and Versus, an unreleased early access FPS. Great. Steam early access. Oh, holy shit. Very Tall Bart has followed. On Twitch, is that the real Ver Very Tall Bart? Thank you also, Jen Scarlet, for gifting a tier one sub to Sober With Hair. Seaweed 37 uh, for resubscribing for four months in a row. And Rachel89075, thank you very much for uh, for giving. Is that the real, real tall Bart? Oh my God. Can we get, can we get like, what what is the pog emote I have? We love Very Tall Bart. We watch so many Very Tall Bart videos to, as uh, palate cleansers. Yeah, no, he he just I'm I'm looking in my my mini feed on OBS and somebody with the username Very Tall Bart just uh, just followed me. So let's uh, dig right into this. Just already we got this kind of Greek statue lady. Uh, this is a bad main menu. This is, if anybody knows, this is very reminiscent of, um, <clears throat> like, if, if you've ever watched James Stephanie Sterling years and years ago, they had a whole series on shitty Steam Greenlight games, which I've I've actually been meaning to rewatch in a game, in a way, um, because those those videos are hysterical in a, in a in a way in a certain way, um, but yeah, I love I don't know if it's coming across on stream, but it says we're working quickly to resolve the bug issues, but the text is actually bugging out, and there's no way. That's intentional, but that is very funny. All right, yeah, let's let's get going. New game. Oh wow, I got a whole. I can't zoom in at all. All right, let's do ability points too. I want to be. All right, we're going to Epstein's Island. Here, here's my thing. If I'm going in, in a hypothetical where I'm going to Epstein's Island, I'm going there to Minecraft Jeffrey Epstein, right? So, what do we want to wear? What do, what I should probably do intelligence and then strength. Uh, hair type. I can't even make those out. Is there not a... No, there's no way to, like, zoom in. That is... Huh. I can't... I I would... Okay, I'm gonna go with 8, I guess. I'm not... I literally can't tell the difference in hair color. Is I don't think it's changing anything. Alright, pants color. Those are... All just different shades of red what this is just various purple green pink how are there the most skin colors that go to like purple and green all right let's go to that 
uh, character difficulty level one, two. Oh, what? All right, rock, rock, arrow and a hat. I'm. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, let's. I don't even know. I don't even know. We're loading everybody. Mmm, pork goza. Gender ambiguity! Oh, we're just in this. Okay. Put those down. Okay, um... Oh, God. That's gonna make me do a mess. Uh, all right, we got LMB hit, so that's just the, the trigger. All right, so let's, I'm, I'm turning very slowly, so you can't, so it's not gonna like screen tear, but watch if I, I can do this. And this is just like shaking back and forth. All right, let me see if I can turn that shit off, because God, that looks terrible. Um, The fact that they have everything set to low, medium, high, and epic is just, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be missing anything on Epstein, the video game, if I turn the settings down a little bit. I don't think this visual splendor is gonna, all right, well, that's not as terrible, I guess. The motion blur is still dog shit, and there's now fog inside the house, Rad. All right, so we have, is this a, is this a goddamn survival game? Yeah, no, uh, Amy does art. It is... So, the window for this is Galaxyverse A.S. I don't know what Galaxyverse is. I'll look that up. Is that just like a default? That What I think it probably is seems like a default survival game maker. From Steam Community, Galaxyverse is a MMORPG developed in the first quarter of 2021. Create your own avatar and spend time with your friends in the digital world. Yeah, it, it just looks... I Can't tell. Hard to tell. If you squint your eyes, it might not look so terrible. Eh. Galaxy versus the developer's name on Steam. Great. So they couldn't even name the application the proper game. All right, so I don't know what this is. Thus far, in in this cheaply made shoddy pile of garbage, um, mention them in the community. We'll take care of it. There are no po- Ha ha! It's, because, you get it? Because Palmon just came out. The, the Pal World game just came out, and that's a survival game. So no Pokemon here. Your 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 princess, your Pokemon is in another castle. Ha! <laughs> in in fairness, I am surprised the first joke. I don't know why I turned my music off. I'm gonna turn the the vaporwave jams back on. You can have some beats going on. Um. I am surprised the first joke is uh, not about Epstein not killing himself. Okay, so we got... Alright, I got... How do I... Quest Epstein. Make your first hatchet. Fucking what? Where? All 
I don't... What the shit? Is it just... What? Oh, okay, it's just right out the front door is we're going. Great. Damn, Ubisoft games really letting themselves go these days. Alright, so I... How do I get to that? Is, is there some... Right, let me see if I can check controls. Input settings. Interact E, reload R, toggle inventory. inventory. Note. Okay. Oh, I hate that shit. Assets may be found in the game. This is not a secret. We've done our best to make the game enjoyable. It's not the best game in the world, but good. Improve yourself and your base with your friends on Epstein Island and defeat the evil bosses. Defeating them repeatedly. Have great game. I... I cannot stand when a game developer has such little faith in their creative vision. Or No, that's, that's not the right word. They know what they're making is bad. Like... They know that this is a D tier, also ran flavor, like not even flavor of the week. That's being too generous with it. Asset flip survival game on Steam. They know that. So they hacked together some dumbass Epstein memes to get a slight semblance of controversy drummed up. Like, because here, here's the real... I don't want to say the real tragedy, because what happened on Epstein Island is an international conspiracy that has affected hundreds of survivors. People who are truly affected by a sick, depraved freak of a person who deserved every bad thing that happened to him. And a lot of bad stuff that didn't get to happen to him yet. So, to, to throw on Epstein as the name of the game, and then to not even, some, somebody, um, a, a mutual of mine on Twitter said, uh, Wolf Epstein 3D in response to this, and I was like, Oh shit, Wolf Epstein. That's at least something, you know? Like like we we last year we looked at um the uh Turfenstein 3D. That's at least something. And Turfenstein 3D is is a very based game that you should go play and go uh go support the developer of. But it, it like there's work put into that. Even though it is essentially it is taking the template of a different game. It is taking Wolfenstein but it's making original levels, original assets, original enemies. It is doing something different. That would have at least been interesting. Like a Wolfenstein clone where you are fighting like Mecha Jeffrey Epstein, maybe tasteless, arguably, for something that did affect real people, for something that was tied to uh, members of our government and celebrities who have certainly not paid the price for what they they did to people sure tasteless but it would have been something and and in a way i think you can chalk that up to being in the same category as parody or a political cartoon or something like that this is is this is just an asset flip that they literally pasted the name on to cause some controversy and get like like what what about this right right here what about any of this these generic assets at the opening of this game says to you Jeffrey Epstein's pedophile sex island 
course, I'd be looking at it. Dark Knight, I would rather play Bubsy 3D than this. Yeah, Bubsy 3D is a, like a, a fucking proper video game. I didn't even I didn't even look at that. What was that the note? Establish a base in the island, ruled by the diseased bosses and progress. We'll leave notes around to help you. The tasks on the screen will take you to end of game. There are four bosses in various places on the island that govern this disgusting island. Defeat the final boss, Jeffrey and Jeffrey is misspelled. Uh, complete the task in order. You may find funny items and references inside. Oh, I love items and references. Items and references are so cool. I love I love seeing things referenced. Give me more content slop, please. Uh, that's it. That was the. All right, come here. That, what the f this pig looks like a come on pig come here we're gonna have a luau you and me buddy that's right AI just walk into the water This is like, um, oh, rad. Okay, the loot just fell away. Awesome. Great game. Um, this is like, uh, did anybody, this is a deep, deep cut. Did anybody play Tale of the Sun on PlayStation 1? Deep, deep cut. Mockingbird, hey, at least it's accurate. There were, uh, there were cops on Epstein's Island. True. All right, let's, guess I'm gonna, God, the screen tearing is so, you found a note, press the J key, cool. <sighs> Welcome to the mysterious and dangerous Epstein Island, hero. This is just, like, here, here's the other thing. The, the longer I'm playing into this, the more it becomes clear that this is just a reskin of, like, a shitty zombie game. Morbids, yeah. Help of his rich supporters is trying to solve the secret of immortality by using people's blood. That is actually actually a thing of um that jeffrey was into so uh fed on human blood and survival drugs and turned into skeletons over time jeffrey's goal is to make these and turned into skeletons over time which is a funny way of saying we those were the only assets we could afford from the asset store This is solely in your hands. How the fuck did Steam greenlight this? Funny you should ask. Uh, there's, there's a whole program called Steam Greenlight, and the entire point is to, what is that? Is that a, a rooster? I'm gonna kill this rooster. Right, hundred XP. Was there? Did I get any? Okay. Didn't didn't get any meat or anything. All right, that's rad. What am I? What what is this? Can I... What am I smacking on? I'm sorry. Or er, um, this is my gyoza, my pork gyoza that was just made. It's gone now. I was hungry, so I got a snack on the way home. Ooh, 
like, and here's the, the real stupid part of it. If you're going to be a dick, <coughs> and make a game about real tragedy. Like, my, the thing that pisses me off is the lack of commitment to the bit. You know? Because as a, as a comedian, as somebody who loves stand-up, as somebody who understands the value of a good bit, or a bad bit, it doesn't matter as long as you commit to it. And this, like, there, there's no commitment to it. Is the thing. Dark Knight. Dead Domain. Try and be positive. They spent a whole five minutes on again. I, you know, that's generous, honestly. Um, all right, what do we got here? This is... I can barely... All right, there, there, there's a hen. There's a little mouse... I don't know what the, I, I still have not been given proper. What the f Oh, are you kidding me with this? Look at, look at the way, there's no even, not even a running animation for these bad guys. Are you, open loot, yeah, I'll loot note. Killing Hawking's small clones may not be sufficient. We need to find the real one. However, defeating Hawking with a single punch in is enjoyable. Okay, here's, again, if you're going to do a parody, you, like, the thing has to at least resemble the thing you're parodying. Like you can't, you can't just have. Here's a generic goblin asset. We're gonna shrink it down. Oh, that's Stephen Hawking. Like what? What? Like we're gonna st stick in all of these generic assets. What is going on? Oh, is that another player? No way. Lumber? No, it's not. Oh, God, I hate that shit. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting needlessly irate, I suppose. Right, let me... Stickers, why are stickers not working now? Christians Against Dinosaurs, who produced this? Um, probably not a native English speaker, if I had to guess. Yeah, I'm sorry, everybody. I don't know why stickers and chat box aren't working on the stream today. Uh, and I love how the character walked off in the middle of dialogue. All right, let's start trade. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. It's... Like, and look, I've made games with free assets before. I've made games with paid assets, but you know what I did? I at least changed the assets themselves to fit the style, the visual style of the game I was making. Like, there's there's just no effort. Swain, 402, they have two uh, upcoming projects on Steam you can probably imagine the quality of. I bet. I would, uh, let me... I'll, I'll look up their Steam page in a second. I can't log in on Steam because my Steam has a lot of adult stuff on it. Um, and I don't want to get, like, recommended something. Yeah, like, just the, the lack of cohesive level design. I mean, you know, it's a survival game, so they can kind of just go open world game, whatever. Strange Danold. Is that a, is it supposed to be like a Donald Trump thing? That's just another shitty generic Steam creature. Hmm. 
no, exactly. Uh, Sturger, I was just talking about uh, Stephanie Sterling and especially their old videos that they used to do. Come on now. I can barely see the loot. I take all. How do I? How do I eat? God, I hate survival games. Thank you very much, Braxian, for following. I do not know why. I think it was because I changed some stuff, but none of the alerts... Like, I can hear the alerts, but the alerts are not working. Um, the... None of the, the overlay stuff on my stream is it appears to be working, which is very annoying to me. But, um, yeah, this is... Uh... Yeah, Swain 402, this is, this is $10. This was $10. And I was like, when I saw it, I was like, you know what, $10. It'll probably be worth at least laughing at, ironically. Um, it's not. Oh, are you fucking... Not even fall damage. Alright, I'm just gonna go through this portal thing. Shakiraz, thank you for. Oh, okay, that's just nothing, I guess. Oh no, there's spooky. spooky noises. gonna leave that guy behind. Oh, did he unaggro or did he get stuck? Yeah. I know, Michelle Marty, I was looking forward to laughing at this too. Like that's that's probably the the dumbest thing is that like if you're gonna again I was I was talking about like there's just no commitment to the bit. I'm a, I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. This sucks. Like y'all know I've played I I am not one of these streamers who doesn't know bad games who's like gonna start up a game and be like oh it's a bad stupid woke. Blah, blah. Like, that's, that's not my bag. Like, if you have watched any of my shooter videos, you know I know a bad game. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, there is fall damage. Also, that looked like an untextured asset. They should have ripped off. They should have ripped off Blood Dragon. Again, that would have at least been something. But oh, ripping off Blood, like making a Far Cry like would have been. Oh, God. The sound effects are t terrible. Also, I don't know if anybody heard earlier, but um, when you go and talk to somebody, it plays this like very obviously recorded, like fake nonsense that seems like it was recorded by the two devs who worked on it, where it's just like, and it just sounds like somebody being recorded on a phone mic.
Yeah, this is just a... What the fuck? This is just like a default asset, right? Like, is this... This looks like... Vaguely looks Unreal Engine-y. Somebody mentioned, uh, the, like, the, the Unreal Motion Blur. There's another untextured asset. I want to get to the, the, um, there is a completely jarring bone bridge. Uh, again, another asset I do not believe they made because there's no other, like, architecture or anything matching that. Like, th this isn't, there's, there's no, like, ah, here's, you know, a, a crazy mansion. Here's all this other stuff. It's just, you're thrown into this mess there's archers now like they knew nobody would want to play this garbage if they didn't have are you awesome I, I love a good shooting enemy that never misses in a steam asset flip game I want to get to the statue oh, there's another little Dude without a running animation, hawking. Cool, cool, very funny, very memes. Such doge, much wow. <laughs> hey dog, can you not? Cracked your gambles. What's the Galaxy Verse AS is the name of the website? I am. I am. I've had the right amount of that. I feel. Okay, hang on. No, uh, Crocker Gambles has it for me. Great. Of course, because they, they there's no way in hell I was, I'm looking up Galaxy Verse. I'm like, there's no way in hell they got the word Galaxy Verse. Yep. And if you'll notice, and they have it cut off right here where it's easiest to tell. But you can very clearly see that this is just, like, this is just straight up AI art. Fascinating use of language, uh, like, game language here, like, set to launch exclusively on Steam. So I'm, I, I'm pretty sure Gabe wouldn't see it as a big exclusive. Pretty sure Gabe would be fine if he missed out on Epstein. Oh yeah, LK Knives not gaming. I'm I've I've literally only played what you've seen on stream. So this shit is going in my return. Dynamic survival mechanics. <laughs> Expansive open world. Explore a richly detailed and vast island ecosystem. You can you can really say anything about a video game if you're making it, if 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 I'm being honest. Gizmodo got me covered. Join the Galaxy Verse community. No. 
Oh god, they are getting into VR. Metaverse Nadir? Do not, like, do not play that game in VR, please. Like, that is so... Funk, was it Garbo? It was so Garbo. It It's really not even, like... Like, I know there's technically more to the game, but I'm I'm not going to suffer through it to see whatever dumb, like, asset flip joke they have. And, yeah, let's, let's see what um, Gizmodo has. <sighs> a new video game popped up online on Friday, swiftly capturing quite a few people's attention. The game's name, Epstein. Notably, it's set on an island. If you progress far enough into the gameplay, you end up fighting mini-bosses, including characters dubbed Clinton, Have King, and Minwell. Culturally observant players may notice a slight linguistic resemblance between these characters' names and those of real-life personages who have been associated with another Epstein, you know, who also had an island. The marketing around the game does nothing to dispel the notion that those similarities are intentional. Blah, blah, blah. A verified user on Steam. It's not that kind of world. There's no children in the game. It's a world where we eliminate bad people. Like, uh, okay. Like, at least... Uh, I don't know. Huh. Although this is... Uh, Gizmodo kind of taking it to him. Uh, that's pretty good. When it comes to mini bosses, there are some notable absences. For example, there's no Bill. For instance, there is no Bill Gates, nor any Elam Musk, nor Prince Andro. In short, it seems like there are a lot of potential mini bosses that haven't been introduced to the gameplay. If you, for whatever reason, want to play Epstein the Island game, all common sense compels me to advise against it. You can purchase it for $7.99 on Steam. Yeah, that's about. Oh, yeah, Retro Noric, send me, send me that. Anti-Semitic tankies on Tumblr are mad at me? Moi? Moi? Yeah, Retro Noric saying not having nor exploiting children is the barest minimum. This is true. Also, I'm willing to bet they couldn't get any children Steam assets. Is, is probably the real reason. Like, like I'm, I'm curious because I do not think that, like, there, there's no way in hell. Excuse me. There's no way in hell that, like, they didn't. I forgot what I, I lost my my train of thought. Um, Gort, there's no set, there's no kids is such a bullshit. When you're making those kind of concessions, you've really lost. Well, I see, I see what they're trying to angle it as. They're trying to angle it as like this is like the revenge fantasy. Like this isn't like, they, because here's here's the other thing in the pantheon of edgy shitty Steam games. It's entirely believable that somebody some dipshit would make a game where you actually play as Epstein. So they are going out of their way to be like no no we're killing the bad guys we're killing epstein and them cats and i'm like okay i can i can say that um like or i can see why they would do that but i feel like that is giving them way too much credit <clears throat> yeah exactly like the game isn't in favor of epstein um, or is not just like being an, an edgy, like it is being an edgy cash in on a real controversy, but it is not like it, it's so thin. It's so surface level with its parody that it, you can't even really take it, take it, <clears throat> um, seriously. Poisonous green strawberries. No, like straight up. No, like even, even as a joke, as a goof, as a being like, like, I, I, ironic, I played it for the memes. Like, no. It's, it's not, like, there's nothing even there. It's just a Steam asset flip where they put Jeffrey Epstein's name in. Like, we just got done playing it for, like, 40 minutes. It's, there's nothing to it. <clears throat> I 
All right, who had... Crocter Gambles, was it you who's going to send me the link to Tumblr? <clears throat> oh, Retro Noric, yeah. Oh, I'm sure Red, I'm sure they're looking for the... Um... Okay, coming with links. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'm going to change um, the stream name because, yeah, that was, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. That was disappointing. But I'm going to, I'm going to go and change up the stream to thank you, you're mad at me. <clears throat> oh boy okay all right this is gonna be very fun because i need all right i'm locked in i got my bubble tea i've had my gyoza we're we're ready to go um here's here's the thing for a lot of people who don't know i worked on and i i spent over a month working on this essay exhaustively oh shit not what i wanted to do um sorry that was out of my regular uh what the hell is my i just want there i want to be my channel this video right here History of Hate. I did rename it because I got some some feedback on that. Um, it is it is over two hours long, two and a half hours long, and it is a exhaustive look at the history of anti-Semitism, a history of conspiracy theories, how they proliferated from like literally the the century after Christ through to today, straight line. And here's the thing, it's by no means exhaustive. There is so much stuff I had to leave out just for time and, and the clarity and focus of the piece. So the thing I needed to do at the very end of it, because it is talking about anti-Semitism, and one of the ways that anti-Semitism has taken off in the last year, especially in the last six months, has been because of the Gaza War. And I was put into this position where I had been working with and talking to, in, including people who actually live in Israel. Like one of, one of my, the members of my community who was in contact with me, who I was bouncing ideas off of, he lives in Israel. He knows people who were directly affected by October 7th, who have had people die in bombings. So, Having that kind of context and insight, and then also talking with, I talked with so many, like I, I talked with other Jewish content creators, like at least six people with backgrounds in history. Like, like not just like people who are Jewish, people who know Jewish history, read over my script, helped me out, gave me tips. Because I didn't want to get I didn't want to get anything wrong to the point where people would look at it and go like, oh, you're, because, you know, I'm I'm from a Protestant background. I'm from a white Protestant background. I don't know a lot of, a lot of stuff about Jewish background. And it is... The number one rule, pair of Salamanca, generally the number one. Oh wait, no. Is that is that what some are saying about? I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I'm, I'm just laying the groundwork here. And and so here here's the thing that I am like in studying the totality of this. In studying how the Jewish people, because like people act like one day the Jewish people just decided to go settle in Israel 
and and it was kind of given to them and like there is a lot of shady shit in how they were essentially just told like yeah you can just go on that land and it's yours now and that's terrible that's awful but the idea that like oh israel uh like jewish people don't deserve a state of their own it's like i I, I urge anybody who thinks that to actually look at the history of how Jews were persecuted, which is largely what I was doing in that video. Like, go look at the specifics of how they were targeted. Um, and so I, I don't think, like, Israel is not a legitimate state. I, I don't think it is. At the same time, and here's, here's the real problem, here's the, the bone of contention, I feel. You have people who have now lived there for generations. And this is this is where people talk about the two-state solution. Where enough time has passed, unfortunately, that like you can't just say to Israel, like it's it is not as much as you would like to, you cannot just say to this massive country that has this big platform on a world stage that has this backing of all these Western countries. You cannot just say, hey, pack up your shit and go elsewhere. We don't care because where, where else are they going to go? Like there are people, there is an entire economy, there's infrastructure, there is a government that exists there now. It didn't exist there in the past. Arguably, it shouldn't exist. The tangible reality is though, it does. And this is, again, this is where the two-state solution comes in. Is like, how can you minimize damage to the civilians who live there, both Palestinians and Israeli, while allowing them to live together in peace and harmony. Which is something, I want to be clear, the Israeli state does not want. The far-right Netanyahu government does not want. They have openly admitted as much, basically, through their action or inaction. I do not think the IDF is a trustworthy organization. I do not think Netanyahu is a good faith actor at all. He has been openly racist towards the Arab world and Palestinians. He is openly seeking the total quote unquote reclamation. I understand it's not, it is not. Uh, uh, some people didn't like the, the way I use the word reclamation um, because they thought I meant it as Israel is reclaiming land that was that is rightfully theirs. No, I am saying they are claiming it as it has already been claimed. They are reclaiming it. So it is probably not the best choice of words, but I think it's the most apt. Um, they are claiming it from land that is already claimed. But at the same time, yeah, Duck Muncher on Twitter, getting mad at Palestinians wanting their homes back is like getting mad at indigenous Americans wanting their land back. Like, like I totally understand it. And th again, the reality is that this is not a one-sided fight by any stretch of the imagination. Israel has continually expanded its borders, shrunk the amount of land the Palestinians have access to, taken their homes, taken their farmland, given it to settlers, in many cases, people who aren't even natively Israeli. Natively Israeli, for as much as you know that means for a country that's only been around so long. So, as much as I know a lot of people and a lot of leftists, and especially we'll get to like radical tankies, For them, I feel it is easier to say, like, oh, you, like, any advocation for Israel is genocide apologia. And when I say in the video that Israel deserves to exist as a state, I don't mean that Israel, the government, deserves to exist as a state. And, and, and I possibly, I should have been more clear about this, I guess. Um, but I, I was trying to be succinct. And sometimes that doesn't always come across. I meant that, like, the, the civilians who live there, the Israelis who live there as civilians, also don't deserve to, like... It is this great back and forth that has been happening. And I don't mean great as in good, I mean great as in massive, seismic in scale. Where, if you were to, for just say tomorrow... Israel as a state was dissolved and Palestinians all got their land back. Okay. The millions of people living in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, all across Israel. 
they would be undergoing the Nakba. Not, not literally the Nakba, that's an Arabic word. But they would be essentially left in the same rut that Palestinians were when Israel took them over. Like you are, you are answering oppression with a different kind of oppression. One that is totally, and this is where I, I get pissed at tankies, one that is totally arbitrary based on who you feel good backing. And this is, for, for some people, um, hang on, Crane was taken on Twitch. I finally got the chance to inform my bandmate who is in the National Guard about Gaza, and he said, sometimes what needs to be done needs to be done. I don't know how much he knows because he has been in basic training since November. I haven't shown him any of the footage. He, he really can't talk about it over text. That is, that's fucking rough. Um... What needs to be done needs to be done is fucking. Oh, that's so disgusting. Like, mm. so for those who don't follow me on Twitter, you might not know. I got into a spat the other day with uh, some tankies. And I'm, I'm wondering if they think if they, that is what made it to uh, Tumblr here. Because they essentially ended up calling me a Nazi for buying into their words, um, uh, Israeli propaganda. And the Israeli propaganda was like sourced and cited articles about Hamas's October 7th attack. Like, they took umbrage with me depicting Hamas. An organization that, as soon as they took power, executed their opposition and shut down the elections in their country. An organization that launched a random attack. And I, I don't care, Some somebody in the comments said, like, oh, actually, it had been planned for five years. Okay, it was still an attack on a music festival. Where civilians were murdered in the streets. Like, you can't, you can't tell me that's not a terrorist attack. If, if you want to make an argument that what Hamas did is a military incursion, it is some kind of tactical strike, wordage like that necessitates being tactical, being surgical, being intentional about where you're striking and how. If Hamas had gone undercover and strike to strike a Israeli military base, blew it up from the inside, killed 300 people. They were all IDF officers. That is vastly different than a mass casualty event involving open gunfire on a civilian crowd. Like, those, those are two very separate things. So, like, the, the thing with tankies is that they seem to think any radical action that involves violence is justified because it is inherently radical, because it is inherently against oppression. But again, the problem is, you're just arguing for a different kind of oppression. And, and far be it from me, I am not, many of you will know this, I am not somebody who takes threats lightly. I am not, uh, I am, can be fairly cynical. I am not exactly a kumbaya type of leftist. But I also think that you can't, like, like, you can't always just fight fire with fire. Like, you can't. Uh, unlike these folks. Thank you, Renner96. Yeah, Retro Nork. Tank is on Tumblr completely unironically support the idea of Hamas. An openly anti-Semite rapist terrorist org overrunning the land instead of BB and thinking that's better. Yeah, and that's that's the problem. Sorry, my cheeks are now full of boba like a little chipmunk. Is like, there's no room for nuance there. Like, I am wholeheartedly against Netanyahu wholeheartedly against our government supporting them. Everything that is going on is disgusting. I did a whole stream about it. And so I was actually irate the other day. Like I was, I was like pissed because somebody was saying 
here here's the leap in logic and if anybody if, if toilet wine connoisseur or um sean are in the chat i know they saw this on twitter somebody basically made the leap in logic from me saying that hamas is a terrorist organization from that they deduced they said about me that because I thought Hamas was a terrorist organization, they basically turned around and said, oh, you think all, and this is almost a direct quote. These are not, these are not words I'm just choosing. You think Palestinians are monkeys and rapists who would kill everybody if the IDF didn't contain them. Which like, I, I, I was like stunned. I was like fucking stunned that somebody, and, and granted, it's the internet. People have the gall to say some really stupid shit. But somebody saying, I thought that, without a hint of irony, very seriously, because I said Hamas is a terrorist organization. So, I'm, I'm curious to see if these Tumblr tankies are uh, on that on that tip as well. <sighs> okay, let's get into this. Now, now that I've prefaced and you guys know all of my uh, nuanced opinions on the matter we can get into, I haven't been on Tumblr. I don't, I don't think I even still have a Tumblr. Lucas Matias del Aguila McDonald has super chatted uh, 1790. Thank you very much. Chris, the Red Corps vid on historical film, good example on propaganda and how it's been used. I will have to check that one out. Thank you. Raining Synthwave, thank you also very much for following it. Astra, thank you for subscribing. And Dark Knight, thank you for gifting us up to Maxi the Cat. Sorry, just catching up on those now. There are two lamb chops. There are two lamb chops. One of them is part of the main background. And I will cover them up. There you go. Two lamb chops enter, one lamb chop leaves. Sorry, again, my, my cheeks are full of boba. Renaru, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I can't see that one because I gotta be on Tumblr. Um, oh, gotta see that one on Tumblr too. All right. Renaru, thank you. Renaru saying uh, you take things. I try. I try to take things on good faith. It doesn't. I I really do try and take things on good faith. Um, I try not to argue in bad faith, but that is hard to do against people who. Um, don't all right reblogged fra fragment vampire oh here we go that's me favorite niche trans fam youtuber oh thank you Oh, and thank you, Raining Synthwave. Uh, Raining Synthwave, if you like that, um, if you like that infiltration video, just wait. I have something coming up at the end of the month. You're gonna fudge in love. All right. 
justify painting anti-Zionism slash anti-Israelism as inherently anti-Semitism. That is not what I did at all. I, I literally say in the video, I literally say that I, I express anti-Zionist sentiment. And I say being anti-Zionist is not the same as being anti-Semitic. I do also say that I understand why people in Israel conflate the two, though. I understand why other people think that. However, I do not. So I, I literally didn't. But Hamas bad, too. Huh? Hamas literally is bad. What are you talking about? But October 7th, and essentially came out as a crypto-Zionist. Learn what words mean before you call people them. Crypto-Zionist? Oh, my God. Number one rule to survive as a leftist online is never trust YouTubers. They always come out as grifters and reactionaries eventually. Yep, nothing quite reactionary like saying, hey, maybe there's more nuance to this issue. Coming from tankies, being called a reactionary, let me tell you, doesn't, doesn't mean much. Jen Scarlet 69, do you sell Jewish Dogecoin? Uh, Dogecoin. No, I do not. Um, he's real metaphors. Don't advocate. Who's? Uh, yeah, we don't. We don't. We do not advocate for uh, genocide in the chat, please. Who's? Mods banned streamer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I've been watching New Girl a lot, and here's here's a weird intersection of two things I've been doing in life. Is watching New Girl a right after spending literal weeks steeped in research on Jewish history and anti-Semitism, and walking away with a newfound understanding of all the Jewish jokes that the Jewish character um, Schmidt made. Like, like, jokes that I absolutely did not understand before. <laughs> uh, which is, like, they're, they're just a lot funnier now. Yeah, so is there is their bag just literally calling like anybody who disagrees with them, oh you're a Zionist? That was a very funny that was a very funny moment, I will say. This this if you haven't seen this public council forum, this is one of the like most blatant mask off slips you'll ever see. Again, we're on the same side about this. I don't wanna Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign up for Tumblr so I can get um sweet sweet other thingies Pass. hey hey
do, do, do. Yeah, Mockingbird, that's a really good way to put it. I feel like most pro Hamasers don't understand that you can dislike Israel and Hamas, so they pick the one with the smaller body count. Yeah, it's like, do you, do, do you think Hamas would be, like, chill if they just had power tomorrow? Like, more power than they do. One of my partners has been getting me to try and sign up for Tumblr. For weeks and so they're going to be so so thrilled all right let's go to this one what were, what were these other ones retro Norik? There's a pick. Okay. AFAB trans woman. Why do you view trans womanhood as a vibe? You want to adopt a non collection of a wide range of experiences? God, here's, okay. Just this cursory look, this tiny little look at Tumblr has reminded me why I don't fuck with Tumblr. It's because everybody has like the most granular atomized views. Everybody has the most like microaggression possible that they need to make their entire personality. It is so grating. No, it's not about me, I don't think. I, I would be shocked if it's about me. It's because people want the culture and coolness that we have cultivated for ourselves without having our struggle. Yeah, Majestic Direwolf, I think what they're talking about is non-binary people referring to themselves as trans. Like, the, the TikToks going around about the non-binary AFAB people who present femininely and call themselves trans and, like, use the F slur. And it's not... Like... Here's, here's my thing with that. When, I, on a personal level, when I see people who only present femininely, like only present hyper-femininely, call themselves trans, and they're AFAB, I kind of tilt my head a little bit. But other than that, I do not care because everybody's journey is their own and they are on an entirely different journey than everybody else. I don't know what the rest of their journey looks like. I don't know if they'll start taking tea. I don't know if they already have. I don't know how much they've experimented with their gender, how comfortable they are with that. If they wanna use they, them, fucking go for it. And let me tell you why, because the second we start actually, it, it's, it's exactly the backlash that you've seen to Kristen Stewart 
from the lesbians and the gender criticals who for years, for, for years, all the lesbians and the, the gender critical turfs have been saying is that, oh, you can't have uh, tomboys anymore. You can't just have like slightly masculine uh, women. You, you all want to trans them and turn them into men. The second Kristen Stewart, somebody who is AFAB, goes by she, her, and dresses slightly masculine in a very in, 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 in somewhat butch way. Tomboy is she does a photo shoot for Rolling Stone. The second that happens, all of those people couldn't shut up about how gender norms are being destroyed and how it's a bad thing and awful. That is exactly the same thing that will happen in the trans movement if you start locking down who gets to call themselves non-binary. It's either all or nothing. Because the second you hold somebody else up as an aspirational standard over others, there, there are these standards that are impossible for people to meet. It's why so many people like the, the ideal of womanhood and what does it mean to pass are not valid things. They are personal journeys for somebody. Um, uh, oh, Raining Synthway, thank you. Your Spider-Man video was incredible. Spider-Man has been my main hyperfixation since I was about four years so I was same. Uh, before I knew I was trans and to hear you echo Spider-Man's progressive stories was so validating as a longtime fan of the old webhead. Sorry. Oh, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Retronoric, uh, Dede May, if I ask your opinion about the concept of trans androphobia versus trans misogyny, will you ban me? No, because I guess I don't know what trans androphobia is. Like, I, I guess that would be just being mad at androgynous people for calling themselves trans. Pet Dogma, presenting outside of the binary presentation as trans always is exhausting when you're a trans woman who present butch people treat, uh, who presents butch people treat as skeptical, untrans, it hurts. Yeah, no, and that's that's the thing is that, and I'm, I'm not calling anybody in chat this, but it's, it's this thing, there was a joke I was working on at one point um, about trans women. And because so many people, and we've all, if, especially people in this chat, you have seen the shitty, like, Wojaks and Soyjaks people make referring to trans women on Twitter. And they will send them there uh, to, to, like, people who pass. Like, people who are, like, just gorgeous trans women. And they will, you know, they, they're these... They're so comical how far from any t like reality they are because they're always like fat balding men with like patchy beards and like don't shave their arms like and it, they're shitty artistic artistic they're shitty renderings of the worst qualities other people imagine trans women to have ones that are not realistic because dysphoria generally spurs a lot of people to try and get rid of those things like that's why women shave their legs. Like that you they have clearly never known a trans woman or most trans women that I've known. Again, this isn't true for everyone, but like and this has been for me too, even though I don't identify as a woman, obsessive when appearing in public about shaving your face. Um and then the joke was based on those because there's this idea that, you know, oh, you're not a woman because you don't look pretty, essentially. But that's just an ugly woman then. Like, we've already had those for a long time. And that was that was basically the, the joke in the setup. But it, it, it's true. It's that, like, if you go and, and, and people have said this, you know, again, far be it for me, it's not a... a uh, unique observation, but there are a lot of people in the gender critical movement who look kind of clocky. Like who, when, when they post pictures and stuff, I have to do a double take because I'm like, is this the trans person they're talking about? No, it's them. Because human beings are a spectrum of experiences, come in literally all different shapes and sizes. So to say, you don't meet this aspiration 
of passing. That doesn't make you any less valid as a person. That doesn't make your identity any less valid. Because you don't meet somebody else's standard? Fuck that. Um, why are tankies mad at you? They're mad at me for saying Hamas is also kind of mad. Trans androphobia, discrimination towards trans men slash trans mask over their gender non-conforming masculinity. Again, I don't care. Like, I, everybody is on their own journey. And, like, some, some trans people might not even be trans a year from now. Some they thems might go by Zizir, Fei Fair, she, her, who knows? I know an a uh, Mockingbird on Twitch. Uh, I know an AFAB MB who is absolutely an MB, like the absolute epitome of non binaries. And they recently chose to embrace their feminine, and that doesn't change the fact that they're trans. Yeah, exactly. Like, and that's, that's the thing for me is that I am able to. It's actually becoming kind of a problem. Um, I have recently, for my, my undercover assignment, I'm going undercover as a man again. And uh, though I don't look it now, it it is becoming glaringly apparent how uh, much HRT has actually affected my frame and my face and everything. Because wearing masculine clothes and stuff, I have to overcompensate. I have to make sure they're slightly baggier. And I have to frame my face differently. Like I can't, I can't use my hair in this case. I have to use hats and sunglasses and stuff because my face is more feminine than it usually, than it has been in the past. But I still like, I don't dress up. Like if you see me posting pictures of me looking hot on Twitter and stuff, I don't dress up like that hyper femininely every day, but I do enjoy, like I, I enjoy the way it makes me feel. And it has nothing to do with before, you know, I doubt any gender criticals are in chat, but if anybody is there, it has nothing to do with being an autogynophile. It's that I enjoy being seen a certain way by myself, if by nobody else. Zaffir, gonna go take a nap. Have a good nap. I just want to say I love your content. Thank you very much, Medge Monkey. Thank you for following. Yeah, Red Robin Hood, that's... We, we had a whole conversation about it. Crane was taken. I've been developing a serious addiction to dunking on gender critical on Twitter. It is definitely fun. It is so fun. Um, the, the problem with gender criticals is they give up easily. Like, I used to do that same thing, but they, they are easy blocks. Like, they block you. Midge Monkey, you are uh, such an inspiration for me. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for the work you do. Thank you very much for the support. Jen Scarlet have been boy mounting for the last two years due to depression. I still get gendered as female by strangers despite me essentially giving up. Yeah, when you get misgendered in public in multiple different ways, and even me, like, my voice does not pass, I feel. Like, generally speaking. Um, I do not do a good job of voice training. I need to do it more. But I still get people who, like, you can watch my videos. I'm on it. Like, I am, I am not, I'm speaking directly to the camera. You can see my shoulders, you can see my hands, you can see my face, hair, facial structure, you can hear my voice. And I still get people who are like, is this a guy or a girl? And it's, it, you, like, as much as people want to say, oh, we can always tell, no, they can't. And certainly not at, like, first glance. Like, maybe after a little while, if people, because, you know, there are always people, the, the trans investigators, but that, that swings it so far into the other direction where, like, even if they can't always tell, they're going to make up a reason why they can always tell. Mockingbird, is that validating to you? It's very validating. Excuse me, sorry. It's very validating to me.
Ooh, this is fun. Red Robin Hood. Non-binary is impossible even if gender transition was possible. There are two theories for identity. Either you're a transgender man or woman, you can't change that, or your gender is the sum of your characteristics, which if you change, transition to your gender. But even under the latter view, you'd still be a man or woman if you have a majority masculine, female, feminine characteristics. Okay, but what if they're balanced? Like, that's what I do. What if you want... What if you are androgynous enough to a point where you can pass as female one day and pass as masculine another day? No, let Red Robin Hood be for a little bit. Because, hey, no. Leave Wicked alone. Bad dog, no. 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 All right, I'll be right back, everybody. Yeah, also, Kiwi 70, or 37, gender is a construct. Gender presentation is different than gender identity, which is true. Yeah, no, you can't. Sorry, my dog is trying to chew on my 80s limited edition 1983 Ewok right here. This, this, is, this is a vintage Ewok here you're trying to chew on, dog. This is a vintage Ewok, a V-Walk. No, hell no, damn no. No. Angry Goose, very true. I got called ma'am from behind twice while working at Target. I just have long hair. Yeah. Like, that shit happens to me all the time. And it's actually very funny. Um, I had probably my most embarrassed, not a, it, it was very angering at the time, but it has since become a validating story where I, um, uh, I was having lunch with a partner and we were just sitting there together and like when we're out together I was wearing a cute like sundress it was summer um, I had makeup done hair done just looking like a real cutie and when we're out together we just look like two femmes um, and and my partner is is a fab so like just two very feminine people and I had much longer hair uh, it was all straightened and I think maybe a little curled. And we were just sitting there and this guy, I see from the corner of my eye, because where we were seated in a restaurant was adjacent to a bar. And it grabbed my attention because I, excuse me, I keep hiccuping. Like out of the corner of my eye, I saw this guy make a beeline right for us. Um, and I was so, like, I, I, I didn't want to acknowledge it because I'm like, okay, you know, maybe he's, I, I don't like awkward exchanges. And I was sick at the time. I had like a flu, so I wasn't talking in like the kind of higher cadence that I try and talk in like regularly with my, my voice. So it was, hello, dog. I just sounded a lot more stuffy and, and my, my voice was deep. And as he comes up, he walks up to us and he kind of like stands by the table for like a half second, smiles at me. I look up to him 
and he's hearing me talk to my partner. And he kind of interrupts us halfway through a sentence. And I know he's about to say something else. And then he pivots. And he goes, oh, your voice is deep. And it was so... And then he just walked away. And it was such a bizarre interaction. It took me like a minute to understand what had happened. Because what had happened is he saw two people he thought were female out in the middle of the day at a bar and was going to go and riz one of us up. And then found out upon hearing my voice much closer that I was trans. And it's like, it, it was such, it was one of the weirdest interactions I've ever had. And my partner just literally stared daggers at him um, for a good while uh, as he, as he uh, walked away. Oh, I know what I wanted to. I wanted to go into some real dog shit today. Whew. Do we want to just troll the worst, worst of the worst from this week? God, I hate this guy. Ugh. Pair of Salamanca. Who the hell is Benny Johnson? The man has 1.72 million. Sub I, I find it actually very heartening that he can have almost 2 million subscribers and you can be like, who the hell is this guy? It's very fun for me. 130. Do you know the work I have to do for 130,000 views on a video? And that's one of his low ones. Benny Johnson is a grifter, which... Look, it's not going to be surprising to anybody here. Rainy Synthwave. Will horses be discussed in the stream? No, you have to go to Vosh for that. Vosh, Vosh currently has the market cornered on, uh, on horse. Horse content. And I want to be... Uh, want to be part of that same stable, so to speak. I wonder why. Yeah, let's let's go to what was his most recent stuff. Um, so the reason I wanted to look at Benny Johnson is he has, and I, I shared this on Twitter, and I'm going to I'm going to stream it on uh, Sunday. Benny Johnson has a video series, I guess, coming up with uh, Nerd Rotic and The Critical Drinker where they are going to drink beer and talk about woke Hollywood. And I am... I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm so there. I need, I need those idiots talking shit about stuff they know nothing about in my brain. God, he's just like... The Denny Show. The Benny Show. Sorry, Benny Show.
look at look at all the videos he's put up in a day. <laughs> Three hours ago, one day ago, two days ago. God damn. It's, just, it's like this is just like the YouTube or the um the quartering style of content mill. Okay, let's epic Tucker rap. I. Patrick Dune, uh, watch his TEDx talk if you want to die of cringe. All right, let me see if I can do Benny Johnson. Find your inner scientist. The cringiest TED talk of all time. Okay, let's, are we ready for some cringe? Oh, this dude only DreamWorks faces. Proctor gambles you're way too good at that. Is this is this the point where we always discover that I'm good at doing voices and stuff? All right, let me do. Ah! Were higher, we can God, go stop it! Stop! Ah! Sorry about that. Jesus, that was so loud. Okay. Do Benny. I don't... Benny doesn't even have, like, a really... All right, yeah, let's... Christian's revolt against blasphemous $20 million liberal... <laughs> this is... By the way, this is Benny's, like, MO. is just, like, really bad, low-quality, low low-grade memes. Oh my goodness, who's who's popping off with the crispy fry? Thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Vintermint, Robert, Robert E. Cotter, Bella Reese, Leary, uh, Leary Rotting, Stoner Furry, and Crack Rock Hero, and Asu, what, the crispy fried? Asu, Pinky Punk 33, Freezer Burn, Raining Synthwave, Yuki DX, what the f How many did you buy? <laughs> Okay, uh, Rainy Synthwave, Yuki DX, Rashid, The Argyle, Vivikins, A Very Shy Person, A Violet Cat, W. James, Sapona, Star Cats, XOXO Cuddles. Thank you so, so much. Whoa. Um, let me see. I gotta, I gotta have a, uh. Hype train complete. No, let me see. I want to I use my, my subs to get a hype chat. We can't get a scam train. I think I think we can get a hype train going. Uh, we should, it, it should be. Raining Synthwave, thank you for gifting us up to Spaced Out Fish. <laughs> yeah, I do need a, Swain, I think you're right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into that. That's another thing. Uh, Hype Train is just a, a little celebration when I get a bunch of donos. Um. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna mute desktop audio really quick. Uh, so nobody, nobody give anything for a second. Thank you so, so much, Crispy Fried. I appreciate it so much. All right, let's watch this stupid Benny Johnson video. This will be nice because I haven't gone over any um, recent, mo like, modern political content. 
No, I have not yet, Crossy Hossy. This sucks, dude. How old is Benny Johnson? <sighs> My man is... Oh, that's why. Okay, yeah, everybody everybody missed that. There, it's Swain, thank you very much. It's still going on, by the way. I apologize for the... I, all right, that's my other thing I need to fix. Um, he started off by saying, let's, let's go back a half second so you can all partake in the misery of this. What's up, guys? Boy, Benny, there are a lot of stupid ways to spend money. Famously in Alaska, they built a $10 million bridge to nowhere. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Benny. My man's is 36 years old. 36 years old. And he is saying, what's up? It's your boy, Benny. Lucas has tipped one dollar. Gotta go! Remember that Wombo loves you! Thank you very much, Lucas. Crossy Hossie, thank you very much for these 600 biddies. And Seaweed, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Whoops. Literally a bridge that went to nowhere, no place. It cost five thousand dollars to go in that little submarine that went down to see the Titanic. But... And it cost five hundred bucks for a nice ticket actually on the Titanic that didn't end well. But those aren't the stupidest uses of money ever. Bridge bill. There are other stupid ways to spend. Money. Apparently, Christian organizations spent twenty million dollars. Uh, full hard cash for spots. Thank you, Ukronian. Uh, Renner, I believe you can use biddies for stickers, but Renner, don't use stickers right now because I don't... No, none of the stickers will pop off on chat, remember? So it, it'll be a waste of stickies, and I don't want anybody to waste their biddies. All these spots um, were like for Mark Wahlberg's prayer app. Okay? So, I mean, Catholic prayer app, I, like, I don't see any real major problem with that ladies and gentlemen um and mark Wahlberg certainly is a, a like based catholic and lives out his faith but god he's so cringe so this 36 year old man apparently has started going towards grifting the like nick fuentes contingent which is you you can see you can definitely see with like using words like based advocating open like trad cath bullshit whoo yeah, no, Crossy Hossie, that's a that is a great the Benny show. The all these this name shows are so fucking boring. Yeah, that's basically what all the Daily Wire does. Like, Louder with Crowder is a dumb name for a show. It's at least it's something though. It is it is a rhyme. It is a singular rhyme. Um, it is not the Ben Shapiro show, the Jordan Peterson show, the Matt Walsh show, the Benny show. Like, what are you doing? Come on. One of these ads was a very controversial, uh, some would argue blasphemous, and uh, hearsay ad from a group called He Gets Us. This group now, really quick, prefacing what Benny, whatever dipshit thing he's going to say here. Uh, he Gets Us is a group that is funded, likely, by the same, a, a same group of donators uh, that also funds hate groups like the Alliance Defending Freedom. You can go watch. I did a video right after the thing came out uh, on the channel right now when Matt Walsh and a bunch of other people were getting mad at it. And there is a very weird... There, there's something going on with the funding of that group. Uh, and I talk about it in the video about how when you go on the LinkedIn of all the people associated with it, they all worked at a, same, a similar company right before working at the new parent company that was made to possibly shield He Gets Us from like allegations after bad press last year when that hate group connection was uh revealed it's very weird it's 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 a very weird thing um yeah and the hobby lobby guy also gave a lot of money to that same parent company crossy hossie thank you very much for all the biddies that claims to be christian 
published an ad with a bunch of uh, still images of people kneeling down and washing the feet of other people in society. Now, in every single image, there was a oppressor versus oppressed power dynamic uh, dictated by leftists. Now, that's not a reason enough to like dislike the ad. I think we're gonna hit. We're gonna talk about the actual. Story. Just noting another similarity with this guy and Trump: very tiny hands. Just saying. Scriptures, actually. Just saying. Dislike this ad, and I very vehemently dislike it. This ad is subversion. What? What the fuck did he say? Vehemently? Vi Was there an N in there? Like of this ad, and I very vehemently dislike it. In fact, this ad is subversion. Do you mean vehemently? With an H? What? But let's take it at face value. In this ad, there are people like a priest washing a gay man's feet, right? There's a uh, anti-abortion protester washing a girl's feet that maybe just had an abortion, presumably, right? Family planning clinic. And various other like power dynamics, like uh, here's a woman in this neighborhood washing the feet of like a, a criminal alien migrant. Right, that broke into our country. No, there, there's literally nothing in that picture that says that he's just assuming it. Wow, God, like one thing I will note is how vicious, like the way he's ping ponged from job to job, looking for relevance, obviously hungry for it from like his TEDx talk and everything. It's not surprising, but Benny Johnson appears to be a pretty good look at how seeking that power changes you as a person. Because this, this person, like, his entire demeanor, as, as cringe and dumb as his TEDx talk is and how annoying he was, he at least seemed like a genuine person. Like, he was, he was jokey, he was cordial. I don't... He wasn't a good or entertaining speaker, but he at least gave the illusion of somebody who'd be, like, fun to hang out with in, in a short dose, you know? Like, a, like a, mostly just a goofy, like, carefree guy. This is just so, like, I wouldn't trust this guy with my dog. Here's a here's a popular girl washing the feet of, like, a punk rock girl, I guess, maybe. So who is He Gets Us, and what are these ads all about? Well, He Gets Us declined to comment on the specific expenses. Right, I will leave this on for a second, and I'll be right back. going rate for a 30-second was $7 million, they could have spent close to $17 million across their two ads. That's before factoring in the cost of the actors and so forth. I'll be right back. Not every single one was impressed with the spending. You do realize that that Jesus, the one I've known all my life, would not approve of commercializing glorification, Super Bowl commercials costing millions of dollars, money that could have been actually used to help those in need. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, memes were made featuring Jesus Christ. Sorry, I would feed all of you, but I have to spend 14 million on two ads during the Super Bowl. All right, there are lots of memes actually based on this advertisement okay so first off let's and here's the he gets us uh x handle let's go ahead and look at this advertisement that's been ratioed into oblivion okay let's actually watch the ad here we go so here's the cop with like the black guy the popular girl with the punk rock girl guy like a climate activist getting her feet washed notice that the only people ever getting their feet washed are the ones who are like the oppressor versus the oppressed okay it's really important to understand this power dynamic because the entire ad is shot through a leftist worldview where like the climate activist uh, is getting like the climate activist is being served migrant in the neighborhood BLM protesters versus other 
BLM protesters? <laughs> yes. Oh, God, right. I, what did I, I can hear this protest. Uh, two, two uh, three, four, five, six, a black man and a white man on a southern porch taking a bath together as they hold each other's hands uh, okay <laughs> it's very funny like i love when conservatives don't understand the history of things like how segregated water spaces like just sharing water at one point in america's history sharing water with people of a different color was like a no-no like it, it was literally because they thought they would sh spread disease and germs to them like that's that's why it's happening you dingus ah there we go so here's the thing lego panda i've seen a lot of people they do look they have a sheen to them that looks very ai generated however i don't think they are they are two that somebody in one of my comments was saying, oh yeah, no, they're by such and such who's an artist. They're not AI. They just look that way. Um, which is like fair because guess what? AI has to get a look from somewhere. And they do, here's the other thing. They all have a singular style to them. Like they are going for this almost Renaissance, like slightly painting-esque photorealism. Um, and I think that's the thing is that because AI draws from so many styles, what you usually get is something that is like kind of photorealistic, but also a little bit stylized. And that's why it, so many people are like, oh, that's AI. Cause that's, that's exactly what I thought first. Um, but I've, I've, I've had people, I, I don't know either way, but I've had people tell me, yes, it is. And I don't think it is like, I, I think it's either a weird filter or something like that. Well, so here's the thing, right? Like, again, I simply claim, and I do this often, to be a simple Christian, okay? I'm not even remotely a theologian, nor do I... Simple is, is let's put emphasis on simple there. I pretend to be. I'm a simple Christian. I simply read my Bible, and not even all of the Bible. I've, I've read the Gospels, right, for instance. The way he's and also so talking, he gets, uh, you can tell he also watches a lot of Tucker. Like he has a, his, the way he ebbs and flows is very, I'm, I'm a simple Christian. Not a theologian, mind you, but a simple Christian nonetheless. I don't know everything that's in the Bible, but I like to think I know a few things. Like it, it's it's the inf yeah Jen Scarlet the inflections and pauses. What they're talking about is the washing of the feet uh, story with Christ, where to summarize this, Christ washed the feet of his apostles, his closest followers, people that would become saints inside of the church. Right, Peter, who said he also. You shall never wash my feet. Uh, do, 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 you know. Now that I, your Lord, it's on the page, have washed your feet, you should also wash none, one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you would be blessed if you do them. You, you won't wash my feet. Let's see if he talks about Christ, that. Right? And then Christ washed their feet, washed all of the uh, apostles' feet, and said, you call me teacher and Lord, rightly for that is who I am. Now that I am your teacher and Lord, I've washed your feet, so you should also wash one another's feet. I've set an example for you, as I have done for you, very truly, no servant is greater than his master, messenger greater than the one who sent him. Uh, so, so okay, so what, what Christ is saying here is that I have, uh, even though I am the Lord, I have humbled myself and I've served uh -huh. you, uh -huh. and you should also be servants. All right, that is a, that is a good message. It's important to like actually look up the script. I he's like legitimate. Oh my god, he's like pivoting right here. Like he got to the end of that and was like, "Fuck, this doesn't prove what I thought it's gonna." Scriptures and and, and read from them, right? Instead of my interpretations of them, 
Uh, yeah, you think? And so, why are so many Christians, a lot of them who I deeply respect, uh, 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 and probably have far more theological knowledge than I do, like, hate this ad? Well... Incredible. Incredible. God, what a little weasel. He's literally just pivoting and being like, uh, let's see what other people say. No, uh, washing of the feet and washing was a part of a lot of old Jewish and, and still some sex or Judaism, uh, religious observations. Um, yeah, a, a lot of people make foot fetish jokes, but it's, it's just like washing of the body and feet is old, old timey religious observations and a sign of respect. And there, there's a lot of history behind it. Um, it's also a reason why, like, all the way up to at least the plague, like, Jews didn't get sick as as a lot of other, as sick as a lot of other people did because they were better about um, hygiene because of those uh, religious obligations. Because, actually, um, while, while Christ did wash feet and didn't teach hate, Christ also didn't teach tolerance. An incredible thing to say uh, after reading, no servant is greater than his master. No messenger is greater. No uh, messenger is lesser than the one he is sent by. Go out and wash the feet of all these people. Are you... Uh, uh, what? Renaru, yeah, my, from my Muslim friend, it's my understanding that Muslims also have similar washing practices. That is, that is my understanding as well. Uh, but again, I have not done, like, I have, I have a less, I have a more, slightly more in-depth knowledge of Judaism now. Still feel like I'm barely scratching the surface, and that goes doubly for Islam. And I would love to do a, another essay on that stuff someday. Um, I find religious observations and practices personally. So fascinating. Uh, I love I love studying them and diving deep into them. I'm not, probably not anytime soon um, because that video was draining as shit, but I would like to do a video on uh, anti-Muslim sentiment at some point. This is really important. Like Christ did hang out with sinners because all people are sinners. Uh, okay, continue. Uh, Christ went and hung out with like very unpopular people, prostitutes, tax collectors, but he didn't do that in order to compliment them or to embrace or affirm their sinful lifestyle. The story of God and the prostitute. To do. Here we go. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to come to his home for lunch, and Jesus accepted the invitation. As they sat down to eat, a woman of the streets, a prostitute, heard there was heard he was there and brought an exquisite flask filled with expensive perfume. Going in, she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping, with her tears falling down upon his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair and kissed them and poured the perfume on them. Another religious observation sign of respect thing. When Jesus' host, a Pharisee, saw what was happening and who the woman was, he said to himself, This proves that Jesus is no prophet, for if God had really sent him, he would know what kind of woman this one is. So here we have what Benny Johnson is saying from the Pharisee. Saying, well, look, no son of God would be worshipped by a prostitute. No son of God would get this treatment from somebody so evil and despicable. Literally, what Benny Johnson is saying Jesus didn't stand for. Then Jesus spoke up. This is Luke 7, 40. Then Jesus spoke up and answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. All right, teacher, Simon replied, go ahead. And Jesus told him his story. A man loaned money to two people, 5,001 and 500. This is a parable. 
uh, but neither of them could pay him back, so he kindly forgave them both, letting them keep the money. Which do you suppose loved him most after that? I suppose the one who had owed him the most, Simon answered. Correct, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look, see this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't bother to offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You refused me the customary kiss of greeting, but she has kissed my feet again and again from the time I first came in. You neglected the usual courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has covered my feet with rare perfume. Therefore, her sins, and there are many, are forgiven. For she loved me so much, but one who is forgiven little shows little love. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then the men at the table said to themselves, who does this man think he is going around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Literally, the opposite of what they're saying. He, Jesus here did not say, you need to stop being a prostitute. You're a thought. Turn from this life. What Jesus here is saying is that everybody is different. How, how much you love God, in this, in this case, in religious terms, is not determined by what you've done. And in fact, a lot of the time, the most pious people, which is a yeah, almost like a running theme in the Bible, you could say, uh, the most pious people turn out to be assholes who don't actually love God, like the Pharisees. Just at that time, a highly prized slave of a Roman army captain was sick and near death. When the captain heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. They began pleading earnestly with Jesus to come with them and help the man. If anyone deserves your help, it is he, for he loves the Jews and even paid personally to build us a synagogue. Jesus went with them, but just before arriving at the house, the captain sent some friends to say, Sir, don't inconvenience yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of any such honor even to come and meet you. Just speak a word from where you are, and my servant boy will be healed. I know because I am under the authority of my superior officers and have authority over my men. I only need say go, and they go, or come, and they come, and to be my slave. Do this or that. And to my slave, do this or that, and he does it. So just say, be healed, and my servant will be well again. Jesus was amazed. Turning to the crowd, he said, Never among all the Jews in Israel have I met a man with faith like this. And when the captain's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. Laddie. Come back to life again. This is a weird translation. All right, so this is just talking about different miracles. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Paraphrase translate. Scottish translation. Okay.
The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Because back in the day, uh, women were the ones who paid for it. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. And mind you, what Christian nationalists, the tradcast would say, should happen to this woman is, oh, she should be stoned. Obviously, she's like an adulterer. That's a sin. Uh, duh, you should kill her. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. In response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. And Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go. And from now on, not, do not sin anymore. And Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world, whoever blah, blah, blah. Uh... Do, do, do. You judge by appearances, but I do not judge anyone. And even if I should judge, my judgment is valid because I am not alone, but it is I and the Father who sent me. Even near your law, it is written that the testimony of two men can be verified. I testify on my behalf, blah, blah, blah. This is him saying he's God. <laughs> Truth will set you free. In Angry Goose, there are whopping three verses about homosexuality and a metric ton about how terrible rich people are. Guess which one is controversial? Hmm. Also, there's uh, biblical history is fascinating to me, especially the like etymology of how things are passed down through time. There are a lot of biblical scholars based on the way Hebrew texts have been translated and mistranslated over time who will say that uh, there's actually probably not actually any verses about homosexuality explicitly. Uh, it's actually more likely about pedophilia. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, like stuff around here is, is fascinating to me. Hmm. So, yeah, um... Jesus literally saying, I will not condemn you. He does say, go and sin no more, but I will not condemn you. Neither do I. Has no one condemned you? Then neither will I. Literally saying, this prostitute loves me more than you. Pharisee who would judge her. Literally people saying, well, this can't be the real Christ if a prostitute loves her. So... Yeah, exactly. Yanzo, basically pedophilia that's between a grown-ass man and a boy. Let's uh, let's let's hear how intolerant. Let's uh, actually, I want to look up to more verses because there are a lot of actually good verses. Let's look up Jesus and tolerance because there are a lot of good instance verses. Judge not, that you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Do not make judgments about anyone ahead of time. This is not from Jesus. This is from Paul. Uh, before the Lord returns, for he will bring our darkest secrets to light and will reveal our private motives. Uh, another one from Paul. Who are you to judge another servant? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And here we got the same one we were just looking at. That's just like more of an article. Oh, this one talks about the uh, poking out your eyes and cutting off your hand if they cause you to sin. A 
Okay, well, this is not great to say it was a message from Jesus in Revelation, considering that wasn't what he... Like, that's not really... Oh yeah, Angry Goose. That's that's not surprising. You you look like ten minutes. You will find stuff like that. Uh -huh -huh. I just want verses, dog. Like, give me give me some of them verses. There we go. Uh, Coda Anthony. Hello. These are all Paul. 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 Unity. Huh. <laughs> judge not that you will not be judged. We've heard that one. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law of the prophets. Interesting. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you've been taught. Avoid them. Leviticus, when a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native-born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Egypt. Oh, here's, here's a good one. All right, here we go. Our swindler. I wish I had, I had some really good verses I used to rebuke, rebuke the, um, when the pastors, when I first put out the hate church video and some of the pastors were coming into my comment section, uh, and I just, I listed out a shit ton of them that kind of shat all over what they, like their, their only response is, which is great. I love this response from them. When you spit back their doctrine in their face and how hypocritical they are and how bad they are at understanding the Bible they always, always resort to, well, you don't understand it because you're reprobate. So you can't understand it. So literally anything you say can't be trusted. It's like, oh my God, what a perfect fucking fallacy. Yeah, you took it out of context, exactly. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both alike an abomination unto the Lord. What are you, what, what are you doing? I leave you alone for two seconds? What? No, this is a no-no. Why are you eating this? Booger, you have food. You ding dong. Creature does demand it. The creature always demands attention. She gets plenty. <laughs> oh no, it's Lady. You have heard it said, 
You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. That's probably one of the fucking best best verses to really disprove all all of the shit that Benny is saying. From from so to speak the mouth of Jesus. Anyway, let's hear how after let, let, let's I want to go over there there are a couple good choice verses. Jesus kind of dropping bars there. Not going to lie. Love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. For God makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and send rain on the just and the unjust. So God loves everybody. Love those. Jesus saying, love those who persecute you. Love those who are different than you. Anyway, let's hear what uh, Benny says about what Jesus said. Styles. He did that to correct them. For instance, ladies and gentlemen, when the prostitute uh, washed Christ's feet, which of course was an act of servitude uh, in the Bible, uh, Christ said, I don't condemn you. Go and leave your life of That wasn't, that's the wrong story, Benny. You're, you're looking at, this, we, we just went over this. This is the story about the woman being stoned. Not the story about the woman washing feet. I want to see if anybody brings that up. Nope, they're just saying, oh, but where are these false prophets? Good God. Oh my God. All of these people. Like not, not a single one. I... Uh, Unfucking believable. Like all these people who are calling themselves Christians. God damn. Um, Poisonous Green Strawberry, Alexei Navalny. I, are you serious? Like he was alive at least a couple days ago. Huh. All right, we will, we'll talk about that in a second. I want to get through this dipshit really quick. Sin. Sin no more. Here's so, every translation here. Again, he's, he's reading the complete wrong story for what he's talking about, but great. In every translation, Christ says, do not sin anymore to Mary Magdalene, who was a prostitute. He's kind of missing the part about, did they condemn you? Then neither do I. That's, it, he's kind of missing that important tidbit. Do not sin, please. Go and sin no more. Do not sin any longer from now on. You from keep reading on, the same one, but no you're still not, still not doing the right story. Like, that was actually the message of Christ using the words of Christ. So, Christ is not about, like, Jesus Christ did not preach tolerance. What this ad, to me... Again, from the mouth of Christ. <clears throat> Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. From from Jesus' mouth, buddy. Actually, and I'm getting the... the like, that's actually in context so seems to be projecting is that everything is permissible 
and that everyone's lifestyle and every choice, sinful or not, is is to be a, not only appreciated, but to be encouraged and celebrated. That's that's literally not what they're doing. Like it's it's just showing respect. Literally doing also as Jesus did in the washing of the feet. Like the entire point. Here's here's the thing that conservatives aren't getting, and they're making them so bent out of shape about this foot washing on. The entire point of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples was to show them, to leave them in, in his, one of his final moments when he knew he was getting ready to go die before the last supper for all of his friends and loved ones were gathered one last time. One of the final lessons he left them with was no man is greater than another. Because they had all this reverence for him and all the miracles and stuff he'd been doing. And they were all freaking out when he went to wash their feet. Like, Master, no, you, you can't do this. Like, please, let us do it. And he took it upon himself to say, no, because I am not better than you. And go out into the world and do this for others. Remember, when I'm dead, I was not better than you. You are not better than others. And spread that message in the love of God and yada yada and so forth. That is what is happening here. And that is what is tripping these conservatives up so much about this ad. Is that it is showing people who they think are holy, beyond reproach. Archetypes of conservative attitudes. Showing what they see as subservience. That's why they're like, oh, this is this is praising and this is uh, like making people think it's okay to do these things and this is holding it up on a pedestal. It's not. They see it. Again, they are misconstruing Jesus' own lessons. They see this as an act of subservience. Not metaphorically as a kind of respect. Metaphorically is, is how Jesus was working. That we should all respect one another. That no one is above somebody else. Which is what this ad is getting across. I can't speak for how legit the... what My, my dog is whining about something. What? 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 What do you want? What? Sorry, my dog dropped a ball where she couldn't get it and was just whining there. I, I completely forgot where my... Uh, where my, my train of thought was going. Um... Yeah, it's it's like somebody, uh, holy lazy duck, saying conservatives can't be humble. It's it's literally a part of that. Like humility was a big thing for Christ. It's why they couldn't nail him. Like we were just seeing, like they were hoping to make Jesus catch a charge over condemning a woman to death, and he's like, "Who who here hasn't sinned?" And Pharisees were like, "Fuck, he got us. Damn it." And it's like, and that's the kind of shit that these like Chad bro, Trad Cath dipshits wanna like act like a badass about. They it's it's the same, honestly the same with the Baptists and the NIFB that we've covered, where they just they they hold it above. They're just like, oh, we're better than everybody else, and we're everybody else is gonna burn in hell, and you're you're a sinner, and we're awesome. And it's like, that's not what Jesus taught. Jesus taught that you should wash the feet of sinners. Go into the world and do as I have done. That was kind of Jesus' whole bag, man. Fuck. No matter how nihilistic or selfish or degenerate or sinful it is, I mean, there, there's literally a woman at abortion clinic, which is murder, okay? On that note, buddy. Huh. 
A pregnant woman who's injured and aborts the fetus warrants financial compensation only to her husband, suggesting that the fetus is property, not a person. Fetus does not possess a right to life. Numbers 5, 11 through 31. God enumerated his punishments for disobedience, including curse shall be the fruit of your womb, and you will eat the fruit of your womb, directly contradicting sanctity of life claims. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Oh, I got a whole bunch of Old Testament stuff about murdering unborn children. Weird. That is what it is, okay? That's the way I see it. That's the way my, my religion sees it. That's the way, that's what the, that's what Christ teaches. That's what the Ten Commandments say. Way back in the old books. They only, in the old books. I would love if he could list for me Genesis, Exodus, Levit Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Kings, First and Second Samuel. Like, I would love if he could go down. What, what, what books do you know? Huh? Are you, uh, when was the last time, Benny, you opened up Nehemiah or Habakkuk? Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Hmm? Okay, thou shalt not murder. Pretty high up there. Like, th th this ad seems to be, like, saying, nope, all of this is permissible, which is... In, in what way? Again, that, that's the, the total misalignment here. Is that Jesus did say, go and sin no more to a prostitute. He also said, this prostitute loves me. She is worthy to be in my presence. He also said, I do not condemn you. Like, there is there's just no nuance here. Actually, not what Christ did when he came L into fucking in, in, literally is literally is contact literally with is. Oh my god! He said, "Go and sin no more." I mean, it seems pretty simple. Christ didn't teach tolerance. Christ taught salvation and to be born again. And one other important thing about Christ. Pretty sure also Christ only taught about being born again. I This could be only my upbringing. Pretty sure Christ only taught about being born again in a spiritual sense after death in the, the kingdom of heaven. Um, not being born again as a Christian here on earth, like through baptism. That, that I could be wrong about that. I'm, I've looked up so much I don't want to look that up too. Is that Christ... Huh really didn't like people who subverted oh, this the is, church. This is very funny. Um, that is... Going into the the money changers and oh, here's here's where Christ, because this is the thing where people always like to be like, oh, Christ Christ beat people up that he disagreed with. I was like, well, I mean, yeah, he did, but also this is talking about like cheats and swindlers who were, were stealing money from people. Um, but it, you have a picture of Donald Trump on your wall. I don't know what else to say. I feel like that that does it pretty good. <sighs> Very scary. Something that actually keeps me up at night, quite frankly. I never want to portend or to ascribe unto myself some type of like, um, not like knowledge beyond like what I have read in the scriptures themselves. I don't claim to be some type of great teacher. All of these things are, I don't know why he says some things. Like he's like, oh, I haven't been to journalism school. I'm not a theologian. I don't, I'm, I don't consider myself to be like some kind of teacher. It's like, you look, there are some things you don't need to explain. Like this is, this is what we call in the writing game, needless exposition, buddy. I don't claim to have some type of intrinsic wisdom. I just read the Bible as it is. Okay, so let's read the Bible. Do you though? Do you though? Christ was confronted. You literally just missed of the church. attributed a, uh, a story. This, this, using the church as like a marketplace and an animal shelter 
and to like make profit off of. Hmm? Gotta have some profit if you're with his SAT words. dollars on Super Bowl ads. What did Christ do? He made a whip out of cords. This is from John 2, 15. He drove them from the temple courts. They, they paid cattle, that money. He scattered the coins of the they money aren't, They aren't and making money. Their tables. Jesus made a whip. So here's the thing. Is while they solicit donations, they are not like... They don't solicit donations openly on their website. Like, it is not like a scam organization. This is one of the things why I'm so reticent to, like, outright condemn the He Gets Us movement. Because so far, it's like, it's a little bit based. Like, it's a little bit based. Um... I think there is a strong possibility it is mostly meant as like a kind of Christian far right psyop. Like, I could totally see that happening, but right now, whatever. Um, the more important things to care about. However, um, they they aren't making money off of this. They paid a lot of money, backed by like millionaire donors. Like we were talking about the Hobby Lobby dude. That's not the same as getting paid. That you're your metaphor just doesn't make sense. With ropes and chased them out of the temple. Drove the sheep and cattle, scattered them. When he was like confronted with sin against the church. Lady. With using the church for profit. Leave Metroplex alone. This is where you get, get tweets like this. He gets us. <laughs> Jesus making a whip. He gets us. <laughs> yeah. So what it looks See, really and that, that goes back to exactly what I was saying a couple minutes ago about, like, how they're into, like, the death and carnage. They are into the Old Testament idea of God, of Jesus, as not, which is why they keep bringing up this story, not as somebody into forgiveness and understanding and tolerance and virtue and all of those things. They are into the fascist ideals of there is the enemy state. God is going to rain fire on them. Something bad is just going to happen to our enemies and we won't have to deal with them anymore. At some point, all the people who disagree with us are just going to die and they're going to die horribly and we're all going to be celebrating. Like, that's that's really what they're into religion for. And it's not, like, that's just not tenable for a, a movement of faith. It seems like to me is that these are leftists that are um, engaging in hearsay bastardizing the teachings of the bastardizing dude you're bastardizing the teachings uh, also look at his hand here is a little i know what you are the church for their own political ends you'll notice that along every single line dividing line here is some type of hot button issue for left-wing like benny what do you no seriously move your hand dude you're like reading the the libs in chat right now like he is he... i see your halo girl softening up the christian church and saying nope it's time to get on your knees and it's time to simply tolerate everything that we want to shove down your throats and that's actually not the message of it's always with the shoving down the throats like that is such a hmm. christ no he's he is very offended look at okay just look at his hand. I, I'm I'm not gonna. Dog is dog is popping up in chat. Uh, I'm not gonna be like, oh this guy. Like I don't like doing the closeted gay thing. Uh, being like, oh this person's definitely gay and definitely hiding something. However, um, this hand movement here, as he's talking about things being shoved down the throat. It, I don't know. Is it, I'm girl softening up the Christian church. Watch this. Watch this. And saying, nope, it's time to get on your knees, and it's time to simply tolerate everything that we want to shove down your throats, and that's actually not the message of Christ. If I may I... be so bold as to interpret the like with the and the. And uh, I can't even w the head move everything. Like I don't know. Maybe he's just been watching Drag Race lately. I like that is so. <laughs> I have I have met femboys who aren't as dainty as that. Like I 
scriptures that I've read, they hate you, says Kingsley, Kingsley Wilson. Candace Owens, who is a Christian, says the psychological conditioning of Christians in America continues. Too many Christians in America are weak and will defend the faiths of others without defending their own faith. To be publicly mocked and ridiculed by the media. There can be no doubt seemingly never-ending denominations has allowed this. One of the typical biblical names for the devil is Ho Diablos, derived from the term Diablin, to throw apart. If God is the great gathering force, sin is the scattering force. What is divided will eventually be conquered, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is the attempt to conquer the faith of Christians and the attempt to conquer Christianity as it currently stands. In I can't unsee it. Yeah, no. Again, at a weakened state, and these leftists are trying to weaken it even further. Turns out that the people behind the He Gets Us ads don't even claim to be Christians. Well, what do you know? It this is great. Um, and I, I say this as somebody who like, like I make videos and stuff and I do, like we were talking about stream highlights earlier, but this is, this is the content he does like regularly. Like this isn't a stream highlight. This isn't like a recap for those who missed it. This is the stuff he puts out. It's just him being wrong and reacting to other people's research. Incredible. G the you grift people who don't oh, believe the grift Jesus, goes crazy. Don't Jesus was the son of God. Crazy. Or, but simply have a deep admiration for Jesus or curious about Jesus, the Jesus story. This explains a lot. He gets us. He gets us as a diverse group of Jesus followers. Oh, that's an interesting way to say that. With a wide variety of faith journeys and lived experiences. Our work represents the input from Christians who believe that Jesus is the son of God, as well as many others who though not Christians, share a deep admiration of the man who Jesus was and are deeply okay. inspired by the curiosity to explore the story. Here's another thing that Jesus said. Oh, uh, hello, Hammock. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. That one I know by heart. So this isn't going to fly, not for me to actually tell you that. You can just read that in the scriptures. If you do, you, do you think people in Jesus' day called themselves Christians? Because they didn't for a long time. Who cared to, but it seems like these people... Uh, in the he gets us. Do we pay for these hats? The Soros authorized page. Us? So many people, and even his, his, in his comments, are like, "Oh my gosh, Soros paid for this!" And it's like, Soros is Jewish, bro. Um, I don't, I don't even know. <sighs> yeah, like three wise rolling. Imagine being pissed at people generally admire your Lord and Savior. Crazy, crazy. Lane Kaplan, forgive me, Jordan, for I've eaten lamb twice tonight. Poor shame. I do love lamb, though. Lamb is delicious. Who taught and practiced unconditional love become associated with hatred and oppression of so many people. This is like leftist swill and propaganda. This is magic <laughs> propaganda. This is not, this has no place in the church. This is actually. The man, calling Jesus the man who taught and practiced unconditional love has no place in the church. One more time, I've kept this tab open. Because it's, it's the perfect banger verse. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. All right, sorry, music got really loud. All right, there we go. I don't know why music got so loud there. Weird. Yeah, I usually, I've been playing music in the background for uh, a couple streams now. Uh, yeah. But to him, it is heresy, heathenry, to say that Jesus taught and practiced unconditional love. In fucking credible. Like this, this is actually hearsay. Hearsay. This <laughs> is not a man. And he did not practice, he did not teach unconditional love. He didn't. He said, go and sin no more. Again, just because Benny said hearsay, it's hearsay that Jesus taught unconditional love. And I feel the need to remind anybody who's watching now. 
that the story he's cleverly pulling that one verse from, he didn't even know what story it was actually from. He completely misattributed it. Wrong story about a prostitute and Jesus. So, also, yeah, uh, it's saying Jesus wasn't a man. He was all man and all God. That's kind of the, the whole deal. That's how he became the son of God to take away the sins of the world. Is he, he literally had to become flesh to take on the sins of humanity. Like, that's that's how it worked. Like, what what are you talking about? He wasn't God. <laughs> look, look at this dork. Next, next he's going to tell me uh, he's not three in one. He's not the triumvirate. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Get out of here. He didn't say Fucking you're perfect casual. as you are. Like, that. those are the words. That's the, the words of the Bible. This is the words. And then over here, this is John 2, 15. Christ may... Notice he's got those two those two verses he's just going back to, and those are kind of his bread and butter. But uh, we looked at, like, two full stories, handful of verses, bunch of stuff that wasn't even Jesus' words. Like, Paul was talking all about loving your brothers and shit, and Romans and Colossians and... Ephesians, Philippians, all that shit. A whip and beat people and flipped tables. He made a scourge of small cords and drove them out of the temple, the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. Well, um, okay. What is that supposed to mean? That's not, <laughs> that's not, not unconditional love. That's Jesus actually being quite angry. I've never... God, oh. This guy sucks. So anyway, we're watching more of Benny on Sunday. Because um, he is... This Ding Dong is doing a video with Nerd Roddick, who I've only heard on Geeks and Gamers shit. And, um... Hello, dog. Let me, let me go to widescreen really quick so everybody can see what dog is trying to do. Dog, she gets under my arm. And just wants to give me a ball. This is just my life. I just put my arm here. And she go. Yeah, see you knocked everything over. What are you doing? Just put my arm here. See, I'm just going to ignore her for a second. She loves you. Yep, here she comes. It says take ball. Take ball, please. Take ball. But then watch watch when I go to grab it. it says no. No ball. My ball. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. You're such a bug. You're such a little booger. Yeah. No. Er, er. You catch. Oh, good catch. All right. Only throw. Mm, all right. Let's go. Let's see what Matt Walsh has been cooking. Ooh, oh, Matt Walsh has been cooking some bullshit. Shut up, hate this. I, re I don't want to hear that again. Uh, they are setting up to arrest me? I have not seen that. That looks like fun. Oh yeah, uh, Alexei Navalny. Uh, hammock, I got my Mommy Carlock shirt from Etsy. Alright, NPR. Alexei Navalny is the latest Putin critic to die in, quote-unquote, suspicious circumstances. Uh, uh, opposition leader is in a penal colony in Russia's Arctic North was shocking, but hardly surprising. Yeah, I'll say for penal colony in the Russian North. Victims to shooting, poisoning with radioactive or nerve agents, or plunged to their death from open windows. Weird. Polar wolf. 
Polar Wolf, name of my favorite Metal Gear villain. Uh, Navalny was seen smiling in a video from the court hearing and even managed to send Valentine's Day greetings to his own wife. Snake, you're fighting against a warrior named Polar Wolf. Polar Wolf. Uh, anyway. Navalny was seen smiling in a video from the court hearing for being sent to Russia jail, Russian jail in 2021. Navalny survived a poisoning attempt that nearly took his life during a flight from Serbia to Moscow. Uh, he sought emergency treatment in Berlin where doctors said he had been poisoned with a nerve agent called Novichok. Uh, are y'all going to play buy play the metal yeah i'm i'm buying that metal gear 3 remaster for sure i've i've been playing on and off metal gear 2 and metal gear 3 the the hd versions they put out oh fuck i fucking love those games i i forgot i haven't played them in years forgot how much i love them navalny joins a long list of opposition figures critics and journalists who have done, uh survived poisonings Yeah, Boris Nemstov. Deputy Prime Minister under Putin's predecessor, Boris Yeltsin. Walking home at night, shot dead on a bridge. God damn. Like, it is so fucking wild to me. For, for all of my upbringing, even as a conservative, Putin and Russia were regarded, like, Putin was regarded as a thug who worked in the KGB. And it's been so funny that since Trump cozied up to him, because he himself is a wannabe dictator, how the narrative has turned where, like, Putin is this, like, orthodox trad ding-dong. God. Oh, yeah. Lane Kaplan. Snake Eater is so good, but some of the mechanics aren't great with manual camo. It bugs the hell out of me that the Metal Gear Solid 3, the the... The 3DS version was never ported because that is hands down, no fucking contest, the best way to play that game. Like it it has like proper 3D movement, shooting, aiming, crouching. It is it's insane to me they did not port that to the the modern collection. Like I know why they didn't do it for the old HD collection, because 3DS hadn't that version hadn't been out yet, but why not do it now? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, uh, Persephone uh, Paturia, I did listen to the Tucker Putin interview. I thought for sure Tucker was going to get taken out and fucking hit manned at the end of that. Majestic Direwolf, the Russian Wikipedia page for the camp says it's past the Arctic Circle and has permafrost conditions. Been waiting to dd to break it down i really don't want to listen to it alone it's it, it's good it's fast it, i would listen to that knowledge fight episode because it's it's been fascinating i probably won't cover it um because i'm not personally very i really don't like tucker like i i find him so fucking boring like so boring like i find people like nick fuentes and matt walsh boring but there's enough stupidity and hate there to keep me interested Tucker is just, like, you want to talk about somebody who is a grifter? Tucker is just a grifter. I don't think he actually believes anything. And he's so evidently phony and fake in everything he says. I just, I can't watch him. I can't do it. Um, and then I also hate Putin. Like, the dude just makes my skin crawl. He's such a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Anna Politkovia. Politkovskaya. Shot dead in the lobby of her... Well, a lot of guns. Damn. Yevgeny Prigozhin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yevgeny Prigozhin. I'm like, why does that sound familiar? No, he was the one who died. <laughs> oh, boy. The unexpected... This, this was fucking wild to watch. Like, on, on a world stage, Putin just get away with murdering a political rival. 
The unexplained blast came two months after Prigozhin's mercenary army had marched on Moscow in protest over what he called the lack of support from Russian military leadership. Putin and Prigozhin later brokered a deal that ended the rebellion in exchange for the rebels' amnesty and exile in neighboring Belarus. Yeah, from the Wagner Group. Unexplained. Hmm. Hmm. Wonder what could have happened there. Sergei Magnitsky. Yeah, so like that's that's really all the reporting there is on uh, Mr. Polar Wolf. Damn. Biden says Putin is responsible. Oh, Hammock, if you haven't watched, so go listen to that Knowledge Fight uh, video because, or the, the Knowledge Fight podcast on the last Tucker episode, because Tucker, like, jokes around with Putin. Like, tells jokes sometimes at his expense. And fucking, uh, like, basically asks, like, hey, you've been keeping an American hostage here. Would you be able to give him back to us in good faith as, as a show of your good faith towards the West? Like, it's, I don't think Tucker, here's, and it really showed me, I don't think Tucker knows in that moment who he's talking to. Or, like, doesn't sincerely believe. Like, he's like, oh, no, Putin hasn't had people killed. It's like, dude, what the fuck? Like, like listening to it, I my jaw was on the floor. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Are you out of your fucking mind? Um, make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Navalny's death, Mr. Biden said at a White House news conference while acknowledging that the United States does still not know details of what happened. It's even more proof of, proof of Putin's brutality. No one should be fooled. Navalny was one of scores in prison for their political beliefs, rights group says. <laughs> Memorial, the noble winning human rights organization, which is banned in Russia. Vladimir Karamurza is a longtime opposition politician, oper independent journalist, and... Historian, uh, he was arrested in Moscow in April 2022 and accused of treason for condemning Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. April 2023, he was sentenced to 25 years in a penal colony on that charge and for being affiliated with an undesirable organization. I want to be clear that when I talk also about Trump 2025, this is the kind of shit that conservatives are aspiring to do right now. Like, this is the kind of stuff they want in government. Like, oh, you you retweeted somebody who had Antifa in bio? Ten years for being associated with a terrorist organization, obviously. Like, that's, that's, a, that's a tangent, but I just, I want to reiterate that. Yeah, dude, you gotta you gotta have fucking like just balls of steel to be in Russia talking shit about Putin. Like openly have a platform with it. What a fucking shitty country, dude. Like the idea so many people are like, oh we need to be more like uh Russia. We need to outlaw all this stuff like Russia. It's like are you uh we didn't have uh, poisonous green strawberries. Do you, I think that if we didn't have elections in 2028, we would collapse like Yugoslavia. Uh, yeah. Well, if, if you're assuming that in that time, Trump or whoever the, the GOP figurehead is at that point, inshallah, Trump will be gone, uh, claimed by his McDonald's addiction. But... 
if you're saying that what I think unfortunately will happen, uh, I don't think there would be like a civil war. I think liberals, honestly, there'd probably be leftist organizations actually starting to organize um, in, in a militant fashion. But I do not think there would be a widespread civil war because I think the liberal centrist class of America is too insulated that we would just get more of what liberals did during Trump. Like just, just letting everybody know how much they disapprove of what's happening, but not doing anything to tangibly change it. And, and eventually I think that would probably, you know, it would probably lead to a collapse or a civil war of some kind. Um, and again, this is, this is a very far out, far out there fallacy. You know, like this is like, we're, we're talking eight years in the future, elections being outlawed. Like this is still pretty out there. I do not want anybody to think I'm saying like, oh, I'm, this is not like a Tim Pool moment where I'm like, honestly, I think there's going to be a civil war. Like not, that's, that's not what we're doing here. Um, but I think eventually if, if that was outlawed, if Trump does try and do the whole God emperor thing. Uh, I think there was there's also probably gonna be fracturing among the conservatives before before anything else too because Trump is not like like say what you want about the dude he is not he has less years ahead of him than he does behind you know and uh, like like I think this year this election cycle if nothing else has shown us that. Republicans largely are kind of accept no substitutes when it comes to Trump. Like they they gravitate towards people like um, I was about to say Gavin Newsom, but that's the wrong guy. Uh, Greg Abbott and DeSantis, who are the same kind of pedantic bullies as Trump, but they don't accept them as substitutes. And I think that's where it, the the movements begin to get a little bit atomized within conservative spaces. Uh, when it comes to, you know, who are more rhinos, who are more uh, Christian nationalists and, and all that shit. Um, who are, who are like, just the Reagan Republicans who are slightly fashy versus the people who think that those people are gay and want them all in prison. Like, and I, I could be totally wrong, but as somebody who's paid attention, I think the one takeaway we can guarantee from the last couple years is that if, tr if tomorrow Trump was ascendant, took everything over in a brazen display of open fascism, like, I don't think the liberals would be lining up to, to take up arms. Like, do you think Jimmy Kimmel is going to go sign up to be in the anti-Trump army? Nah. Yeah, no, angry goose. I've I've said stuff like that before. It's it's not Trump we should be scared of. It's the competent dictator who can take charge in the mess he makes. Yeah, and I I I fear Greg Abbott more than I do DeSantis. And I know DeSantis is the one that comes to people's mind more um, because he actually ran in in this election and very much tried to style himself after Trump. But Greg Abbott has a genuine cruelty that neither DeSantis nor Trump has. Um, and Greg Abbott has more of a acumen in front of a camera uh, than DeSantis does. So Greg Abbott is the one that I'm I'm watching out for. That man is a fucking psychopath. Yeah, exactly. Renner Abbott seems truly scary to me. All right, I'm gonna go refill my water and then we will continue. God. Oh. Oh. Wait, cute cotton candy guy. He's intersex but homophobic. What, what are we talking about? Male calico who licks his toes. He's at the lectern. What? Oh, poisonous green strawberries. Do you think we could win a civil war in that timeline? I don't know. Um, 
It's so hard to say. Like, here's the thing. The problem with the Civil War in America is the government apparatus leans heavily in terms of at least local police, if not the military, which certainly does, leans heavily conservative, which is a big problem. Like, if you want to talk about conservatives taking over the government, they have all the guns, but they still don't stand a chance against fucking, uh, you know, some 22-year-old with a PS5 controller piloting army drones out of a shack in the Sierra Nevada. Like, who can, who can pinpoint where they're going to be next Wednesday? And just send a little drone and like but what what can the average person do about that again and here's here's really where so much of the nightmarish dystopia that we live in comes into play is that people russia and ukraine is the closest we've seen to a modern urban war but when you look at so many other urban theaters in the last 50 years, since World War II, since, since really the rise of technology, the era you could call modern warfare, lovingly, there has never been unasymmetrical matches. If you're talking the US military against Al Qaeda, even now, the IDF versus Hamas, Russia versus Ukraine. They are resistance movements, but they are not, they're not equal. And when you take into account, like, the, the might of the military apparatus, the technology behind it, things like the security state that we live in. Like, people, people don't see it that way, but you look at the Patriot Act, and I don't want to sound too Alex Jonesy here, but, like, the CIA, if, if you do a bomb threat over email, the CIA is probably going to find out. You know, if you're looking at stuff you're not supposed to be looking at, you're probably going to get flagged somewhere. Now multiply that times a government that actually wants to root out civilians. Multiply that times the proliferation of things like cutting edge AI in whatever military application nightmares could be dreamed up for it in the next decade. Like, like, think of AI processing in the last last week or so. Not, not even last week, last year, sorry. Imagine what that's going to look like 10 years from now. Imagine how dissidents can be framed in propaganda. Imagine what propaganda is going to look like after that. I think if there is a civil war... In the, in the awful eventuality, if that something like that were to happen, it would be, there. there's no precedent, really, for what would happen. It would be, it would be nightmarish. Uh, like, there, there, again, there's, there's no precedent. Like, we've, we've never seen anything really like it. And unfortunately, it seems like, like, I, I think a lot of LARPers and Boogaloos and, you know, all these people who are like, yeah, we, you know, t when, when we rise up, you guys will all pay. And it's like, they, they don't understand what, like so much of the conservative movement, so much of the conservative moment right now is focused on making the bad guys suffer, which is, which has largely always been the aim of conservative movements. It's pointing out somebody this person is threatening our way of life. They're they're trying to change our traditions, the way that we do things. That's that's what you know conservative. That's what is conservative about conservatism, is that they want to conserve the way of life that they have, and they are threatened by anything that might infringe upon that. But it's it's escalated to such a point where now conservatives, and the, and it's not it's not every conservative naturally. You know, everybody's going to have a dad or a mom or whoever who is like. You know, they just vote the party line because that's the way they always have. And they're problematic and they say some racist stuff every now and again. But you know they're not a hateful, evil person. 
The problem is, is that hate and that evil has spread so far in the mainstream of the discourse. And it trickles down to people like that, too. And it's gotten to this point where so many people only see the eventuality of an open conflict of these things spilling out. And, and you, you saw it on January 6th, where it is this, this narrow-minded, focused version Uh, uh, sorry, I'm getting my phone blown up really quick. Narrow-minded, focused version of what they think the war will look like. And it's just like, we need to get in there. We need to raid the Capitol. We need to, we're taking America back. And it's it, it, like, but it's not really going to be that way. I think a lot of people are going to be incredibly disillusioned if they are ever brought into a violent spat like I, I i joked about it on twitter but like so many people seem to think that like trans people have no way to defend themselves like every trans polycule doesn't have a gun girl who has three swords and trains with them autistically <laughs> i mean that in a loving way but um no it's scary shit poisonous green strawberry is probably devolved into world war one style trench warfare just a thousand times worse I don't even know trench warfare. I mean, I think it would be urban for sure. I, well, and it, you know, it depends on the areas. Like that's, that's another thing is that America is a big country. And like, we're already seeing, no, we're not, we're not seeing, you know, sectioning off of places that are outside of America's economy and in, in the way that when people are like, oh, just, just cut off California and let them suffer on their own. It's like, that's not really how it's going to work. But I would say outside of the maybe civil rights movement, and it's, it's starting small. But there are places in the country now that are becoming so antagonistic, not just in terms of policy, but in the populations living there, they're becoming so antagonistic towards other people, like namely Florida, Ohio, like all these places passing anti-trans bills, passing uh, bills against CRT, and like bills against progressive things that are in essence making populations there feel unsafe. And the thing about America compared to, you know, somewhere like Israel, Gaza, Palestine, Ukraine, is it is so fucking big. It is so big. And there is such a diversity of terrain to fight over. And also such a diversity of, like, different demographics and different areas. So what I honestly think would happen is it would get sectioned off. Like people would flee for places they know are safe. And there would be p places and people that would be strongholds. Largely, I think a lot of the cities. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's fucking scary to think about. Like it's it's scary to think about. And when you, you really, like it's one thing to think about like, there, there's so many different things to consider, though. You know, it's not just those changing borders, uh, the changing demographic alignments. It's not just who gets what land, but also who gets what parts of the economy there. How, how do those shift? How do the economies shift, import, export, getting food to your population shift when you are, like, if Texas goes to war with California or whatever? You know? And then interpersonally, how, how does that shift when all of these different ecosystems start having their own subcultures based on disliking certain outgroups? Like, it is... The, these are the things that, like, they're scary to think about. And they're the, exactly the kind of thing that nobody who is saying, like, oh, I think we're going to see a civil war... They're not thinking about that. When when they say Civil War, they think it's going to be like a fun paintball game where they get to shoot everybody, all the defenseless libs who come at them with baseball bats and an Antifa shirt. It's not going to be that. It's not going to be that. I, I can't say for certain what it will be. But I do know it's going to be scary as fuck if it does happen. Uh... Like, and, and the stuff, I've, I've been thinking about the AI shit, and I might do, I think my, my end goal 
is if these next couple of videos really pop off and like do really, really, really well, I want to take a month off and uh, go back and finish my novel that I, I've been working on since last year because I, I haven't really been able to sit down and write, spend any, <coughs> excuse me, degree of time writing in a long time. Um, and it pisses me off because here's the thing. The novel is similar. It's not the same. And I had the idea before it on paper. It's a similar concept to Neuralink. Um, not in actual execution. It's much more like there's like a, there's like a Tron, uh, video drone inspiration at work there. So it is not like, Oh, I get to, you know, turn on a light with my brain. It's not that at all. Um, but I do want to finish that, get that done, see if I can get that published before the end of the year. And then I might do a big, long video essay on AI art because I've been thinking about the... the I swear, I, I think I had a dream about it or a nightmare about it last night, but I keep thinking about those fucking AI videos, man. The ones that are going around right now. And how scary it is to see... Like, really, the in real time, the death of millions of years of human progress culminating in just meaningless slop. Like, it is... I, I was looking at somebody, some, you know, Silicon Valley tech bro with 200,000 followers on Twitter was sharing like, oh, this is going to be, this is the, the wave of the future. And he was talking in the, in the chat, he was talking or in the uh, comments, he was saying like, imagine 10 years from now, you're sitting on your couch and you want to watch a new season of Narcos. You input that it has to have, you know, Brad Pitt and whoever else in it. And you watch two seasons of it. And it's like, and, and people in the chat just like fawning him on. It's like, oh, that's going to be so cool. I can, you can make, uh, what if, what if you want to put yourself in the, in the show? And it's like, like it, 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 as somebody who works so hard to be creative, who has spent so long and so much of my life working towards that polishing skills, it is fucking wild to see people like gleefully looking forward to like like it it makes me realize like are there really people out there and it makes me so sad to think about but are there really people out there who don't see art as anything more than content to be consumed in between doing other things like like what do they think makes that art interesting if not the fact that somebody created it if not the fact that a performance can be praised. If not the fact that, oh damn, that writing was good. Somebody did that. And, and you begin to think, break down the structure of how that affects. Just like human ambition at a base level. Right? Think of every time a great creator, a great artist, great filmmaker, great writer read a book as a kid or as a teenager saw a painting in a gallery that moved them profoundly. Saw a movie that reframed their entire understanding of life. Played a game that made them sit in silence after it was done. And then inspired them to want to do that. To try and understand how that happened. To dedicate their life. The limited, the limited time they have on this earth. And they chose consciously. To say, I want to make someone feel like this made me feel. How is that affected when you are just grinding up all of these pieces of art into a, a gray paste to be just consumed with no thought to it? No, Lego Panda, where's the community and stuff like that? It's in, the, the community is in all these people who don't have 
creativity, who don't have artistic uh, ability, who have never taken time to learn, who don't want to. They just want to, they just, you know, it's it's the, you see it a lot in indie game development where people are like, I have an idea, I need a team. I have an idea for a game, I just need people to make it for me. It's like, then you don't have an idea for a game. You have a concept, you might have a write-up, but you you have no experience doing this. You don't You don't know what it's like to put rubber to road. Like, and until you do, like, this is this is why I say everybody, if you want to be a video game critic, the people have, have asked me, hey, what, you know, back when I used to, like, really do game journalism, people have asked me, like, what, what do I do to get in? I'm like, you should try making a video game first. Because, like, you might like playing games, but until you try actually making a game, you don't love video games. Because... If you, even if you never finish that game, if you put a serious effort into trying to make something that other people can play, serious effort into crafting an experience, it recontextualizes everything you've ever understood about not just games, but art. Crafting something from the ground up for somebody else. Um, it's like... <laughs> Like, and another thing I was I was looking at in the chat was like, oh, you're just going to be able to, you know, in the chat, in, uh, on Twitter is people being like, in the future, you're just going to be able to make your own Starfield by just saying, AI game, give me Starfield. And it's like fucking, like, like when, when I play a game, the thing that is impressive to me is, holy shit, somebody thought of this. You know, like, like look at some of the biggest luminaries in the game industry. My, my personal favorites. Uh, you've got Suda51. You've got Swery. You've got Hideo Kojima. And the thing that makes them unique is their vision. Is that they thought of that. They worked with a team to try and execute that. They wrote that down. And with other talented creatives, they brought it into a, a playable, livable reality. Ugh. Uh, I am not sure. I, I do know what Hearts of Iron 4 is. I am not. I don't I don't play really anything tactical or 4X. Echo Buzz. That's, that's a great way to do it. Try and shout out artists. Crane was taken as a musician. I'm afraid. Both afraid of where AI music might go. And not afraid because I doubt that AI will be able to recreate the inherent humanity. Like, but you're not wrong. But here's the thing. Think about pop music. Like, think about how long, for how long, which is, is something that has been decades now, there have been people who work in a boardroom who are predicting algorithms, hiring experts to methodically craft the next big pop hit. This has been going on for years and years. And then think of how that pop music shapes culture like like how music is passed down from generation to generation how it defines people's upbringings and experiences how different it is for somebody from the 1990s to hear britney spears versus somebody who went to high school in the 2010s to hear lord mumford and sons florence and the machine and now imagine there's no humanity behind those songs, those pop music songs. The teens will still buy them. They'll still chart. But every song that accompanied a bad breakup in high school, a, a kid's first breakup, imagine every song that accompanied kid getting mad at their parents, crying in their room, feeling feelings of loneliness that they think nobody else is feeling. Every song that defined for a generation, a time, and a place that 10, 20, 40, 50 years later, they would look back on with a variety of feelings. These are, these are things, these are experiences that are, through technology, through music, through the way it's all shared, these are intrinsic to how we relate to each other. And imagine... If those songs had no humanity behind them. 
They were pressed, created by pressing a button, and AI just shit them out. It, it inducted 10,000 iTunes songs in the pop music genre and said, ah, here's a radio single. It's nonsense, but it's catchy. Renaru, can something not human really recreate that? I mean, it can create a facsimile. And like, and that's the, the here's, here's the thing, is right now where we're at, it is very easy to look at AI art, like laughably so. And I encourage everybody to dunk on dipshits who, who promote AI art. Laughably so, easy to look at AI art and be like, this looks like shit, dude. Like you can tell it's AI, it's garbage. What are you doing? But think about how quickly the technology has progressed in just two years, just two years. Hell, if you don't believe that, go look at how deepfakes affected porn. Where I remember porn sites had to ban deepfakes almost as soon as they happened because people were like, uh, no. But when, when deepfakes first came to porn and they, they made headlines, there are only a couple good examples. Everything else looked nightmarish. Like the faces were misaligned, they were too small, they weren't, they weren't, they looked like somebody was wearing a weird like digital mask. Now, nearly imperceptible. In what, four years, five years? I don't, I don't remember when deepfakes came out. So imagine that, but for art. Think of how many Silicon Valley tech bros right now are out there trying to make the next big AI art thing. How many people are crunching endlessly to completely destroy concepts of art for a profit margin? And, and think of, and we've already seen, corporations like Disney using AI with its flaws. Can you imagine how they will use it if it becomes the, the perfect substitute they need for human work. They already don't want to pay artists. They already want to overwork them and put them on ridiculous schedules. How many fucking Disney live action remakes do you think we're going to get when they can pump one out every three months? What, what does the content economy look like at that point? Like there is, there is a very serious reckoning to be had very soon, unfortunately, uh, over the people who actually make industries run. The artists, especially in gaming. Good God, if you if you follow gaming, like the the amount of layoffs that just keep coming, they don't fucking stop. Okay, well, what happens when AI game development happens? When all of your assets, which, you know, to varying degrees, we've already had things like Speed Tree, but Speed Tree is an entirely different thing. Speed Tree just makes trees, you know? And it makes an asset that you need, you need a thousand trees for your game. Here's a thousand trees. That's fine. That saves time and effort. You can customize it to look tailored to your game. Fine. Nobody cares. What happens when, you know, what happens to a genre of game? when it's just AI shit all the way down? Like, do, do you think Ubisoft isn't gonna use AI to, to try and populate its games and try and sell you? Here's, here's, 100, here's a 200, 300 hour experience. That's just AI shit for $70? $80, $90? Yeah, Angry Goose, like, I, I don't think art is never gonna die. Like there, there are always going to be people who appreciate it, but it is like, like, look at the schism. Here's, here's what I think will happen. And again, this is 
catastrophizing and essentially this is my version of a conspiracy theory but what i think will happen honestly is we will see an extension of the schism we see right now between people who consider themselves like film bros and people who consider themselves like marvel film buffs right which you know grant i like both you can you can like multiple things but there are people who only watch easy to consume content that is their worldview. They don't want anything that's like, oh, it's all slow and boring and involved in cinematic angles and all that bullshit. And then you have people who that's all they want. They don't want anything easy to consume. Which personally, I think is not the great way, a great way to do a media diet. I think you have to have, to know why, to really appreciate something and know why something's good, you have to know how bad things can be. I, that's the philosophy I go by. But it does create this this weird thing of where, like, are we going to enter an age where art, good art, art just tangibly made by people, is now only for the, the richer upper class? Is it a mark of status to go and see a, a film that isn't fucking half-generated by AI art? Like, it, it's, it's so goddamn weird and dumb. Um, and yeah, an Angry Goose mainstream career art could collapse in a worst case scenario. I am, it's a fucking, the, the game industry is a nightmare. The art industry is a nightmare. Animation is, is another nightmare. Like, yeah, it's, uh, just fucking shitty all the way down dude and and you know what the real problem like the real cause of all this stuff is it's capitalism like that's really what it is it is at the end of the day companies want to save money on bottom lines that's that's why they're developing art or, or that's why they're developing ai like imagine how much easier this is going to make this imagine how much faster this is going to make this imagine how much money we can make when we have this like that's that's why some dorks on Twitter will try and convince you. It's like, oh no, this is gonna make this is gonna make it so easy for anybody to bring their their dreams to life. Some some kid someday is gonna be, you know, like ten years from now, uh, a toddler will play on his tablet and he'll be able to make his own animated movies. Like that. Oh well, fuck. You want to think about another nightmare? Think of the like algorithmic slop that kids look at on YouTube. Let's let's go. Oh, do they not have any of the... Hang on. Do they not have those videos anymore? No, I'm not watching fucking Coco Melon. Did they, did they take off all of those shitty videos that they had? Because they had like so many. Oh wait, hang on. Here we go. This looks like one of them. Yep. Um. Oh, hang on. Somebody saying um hammock. Stop. No. God, what a nightmare. Hope not too intrusive, but how long have you been on HRT? I identify as MB transfer and I hope I can start HRT this year and you've been one of my positive influences to give me a boost. Oh, thank you. I've been on, I will be on three years this May. And I have just started, um, I think really seeing like benefits and I've been on very low grade uh, trans fem juice, but I have been, yeah, it'll be, it'll be about three years this May and Although my face has changed. Like I was looking at old photos and stuff. My face has have changed a lot. But I mean, look at, I, I want you to picture this because this is algorithmic content that is made to pick up on kids, uh, the, the algorithms that essentially prey on children. This wasn't made by AI. But, and, and this is, this was a scary thought for me the other day. 
the other day, a, a couple years ago when these videos were much bigger, because there's been this kind of cascading effect of how the internet, YouTube culture, streaming have affected children and the content they consume. And I'm not, I'm not gonna go on a um, a diatribe about how like, oh, back in my day, you know, we had all good stuff. Cause it, you know, like I enjoy Ed, Ed, and Eddie and Dexter's Lab and all the stuff I watched when I was a kid, but it's, it, they're cartoons at the end of the day. But that being said, when you go back and watch them, they are cartoons made by artists, made by creatives. They have good writing. They have recognizable characters. They have style. They have music. They are works of artistic expression, made for entertainment, but artistically expressed nonetheless. When you get into this content economy aimed at children, it is nothing. It is noise vaguely discernible, kind of recognizable gibberish to literally just placate growing minds. I cannot imagine the detrimental effect it has on some kids who just watch this shit for hours and hours a day. Not watching, you know, blue is for sky or C is for not watching edutainment shit, which is dumb in its own way but is at least building something, is building recognition, pattern awareness, spatial awareness, that kind of thing. Stuff that has literally no purpose, but to be a series of flashing images for brand new spongy brains. So, what happens to when something like this gets AI generated. What kind of nightmares? Like, what, uh, imagine, again, the true dystopia. This is, this is some Black Mirror shit that even Black Mirror couldn't comprehend. Here's, here's free concept. I would, I would write a horror story on this if I could, if I had the time. A child just comes into this world, two, three years old, and the first videos they watch are not made by people. The things they watch for hours a day, for years, their first introduction to things, had no human hands interact with them. We have no idea what the fuck that can do to somebody. An angry grease, a robot made the robot that made the content. All right, let's see this fucking nightmare. Is this in G mod? What the fuck? What is this? What is going on? Are these Sims character? This is the Sims? No, this is the si What? So again, I need to express, these videos were massive, like just three or four years ago, massive. All of these pre-rendered shitty videos with like, you know, like Red Hulk, Blue Hulk and all this stuff. Uh, God, let me see. If, I, if, if anybody can find one I need to be logged into like YouTube kids. This is all, I and mean, this is all YouTube kids stuff, but. Yeah, Finger Family, is that what it was?
No, that's a different type of algorithm nightmare. God damn. Ugh. God, kids' content is such dog shit these days. But again, imagine all of this shit just taken up by AI. Man. YouTube algorithm. Uh... Sorry, damn, that got dark, y'all. Sorry, I've been talking for 30 minutes about how nightmarish and evil AI is gonna fuck over our world. But then, you know, get back to all the ways this will affect productivity, creativity, entire creative industries that are... Here's the other problem. Not only do these industries currently house and hire hundreds of thousands of people, we have entire crops of people, and I use the term crop capitalistically, of people going through college, going through middle school, elementary, high school, aspirationally looking to get into these industries. What happens when those industries aren't there? <sighs> yeah. Anywho. <laughs> Swain, of all the shit I've been exposed to on this channel, I think Pregnant Elsa and Finger Family might somehow be the worst. And I haven't even played that many videos for you on it. Uh, Anonymous, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Jade Loon. Yeah, let's, I don't know, who else do we got? We can do, ooh. Alex. Bite me. Uh, Poisonous Green Strawberries, I do have a Discord server. It is Patreon only. So, in if you do, I think it's $3 a month. Uh... It gets Disney Plus failing. God, I hate him so much. Everything woke turns to shit. Ooh, let's watch that. Um, okay, first off, that picture, because uh, believe you me, I know Rogue, okay? I know Rogue. Ooh, that is a really good um, hammock. That is a really... I do like uh, Leah Miller's uh, video. If y'all if y'all don't believe me... Oh, shit. Don't worry about that. That's my uh, conservative burner account I'm working on something for. <clears throat> Why is... What? No. Why does Twitter suck so fucking much? Are you fucking serious right now? Ugh. All right, whatever. Um. Oh, this is my old... What is my Patreon profile picture? My Patreon profile picture is from my... Um...
Uh, which one am I only found? God, why is Twitter such ass? Now, this is my old Twitter got suspended. Are you serious? Not. How? What, what, what words would I have used? You know what? Fuck it. Let me just go to Instagram. Shit, man. I shot my rogue. I, I just want to show off some of my rogue pictures. God damn it. Like, why? You make me go through all these hoops. God damn uh, yeah. So I know Rogue is is what all all of this was to say. I know Rogue. That's it. I had to go through all of that shit just to say that. So um. When quartering is talking about this shit, Disney destroys yet another beloved classic. God, he is always so lame to listen to. Like, he is always so, like... Like, that's that's how you come into it? Like, that's, that's the energy you're bringing to one of your, like, five videos a day? You're just like, Disney destroys another... Uh, classic, like, man. This time, it's X-Men 97, as the show has been relaunched on... He's, like, reading from a script, too. Or, like, barely reading from a script, but he's just, like... God, he doesn't even have, like, his own Disney, words to really bring to the we table. We have already seen several very concerning updated for my... my mind you... He's concerned about the size of Rogue's ass. I'm not, personally. Uh, it should be noted, this is also a show for children. Like, this, this is an animated show for, for children? For children. It, like, it has nothing to do with modern audiences. It's for, it's for children. It's for children. It's for children. Like, why? Why no children? Modern audiences changes to the show. This is a show that was iconic when I grew up. A show. Here we go. His the re all right. So if y'all want to know, hey, why don't you watch Jeremy more often? It's because every video of his takes the exact same approach. Introduce an issue, talk about his personal connection, which he doesn't have to an issue, like which usually takes the frame of like, yeah, back in the day, this was super popular. This was always popular in my generation. And then bitch and whine about it for 10 minutes to get ad revenue. And roll. I have. Crane was taken. It's quite... I found that very funny. So that was absolutely probably the most oh, he's memorable also going to talk about youth. Morph. Disney was reimagining it. So you just knew it was going to go to complete garbage. The trailer even looked pretty good. Um, but now we've got the Disney Plus series. Well, And this is just the first of many. We'll be portraying one of the characters as non-binary and also they have uh done something absolutely unforgivable to rogue 
um, you know, removing entirely any of her feminine features. Uh, one of the most powerful tools she'd used to get close to people was a part of her. Dog, you're really going to say Rogue's ass is an important part of her personality? Are you serious right now, dude? Are you fucking, are you for real? Rogue's ass is a part of her personality. You know, her, her character. I don't even care anymore. Everything woke goes to garbage. I, I just, I'm just surrendering everything old. I'm not going to, there's no point fighting for it. There's no point in even giving these people the benefit of the doubt anymore. Just don't watch it and they will fail. Cancel your Disney plus. Well, that won't happen. You dorks are going to hate watch it. Video where he got mad at his wife and pissed in the drain. So sad and funny at the same time. Yeah, no, Matt. Also, uh, another every good time point. they ruin another show, make sure you tell people that they ruined another show. Seems to and care. Then move on, because that's actually how you defeat this. Too many people keep giving these people the benefit of the doubt, and they stand and they accept a lot of this woke trash, and then they wonder why there's more of it. I'm gonna get into what exactly they did to the show just after a quick word from this video sponsor, Private Internet oh, Access. Fuck Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Private Internet Access. Unfucking believable with this guy. Below and get yourself a 12 minute video, and he still has a minute of ads. Are you God? The grift is unbelievable and he still he has ads on his actual video he has ads for his ads on his videos that have ads low, you may notice a very caked up individual god Nero. he must he must be making so much fucking money also this is one frame where she's in a, in the background that he is he is saying god she went from uh a she went to a negative Rear end. It is concave. She went to, she went from, uh, uh, a... I can't, like, I, the quartering is sadly, I guess, still relevant. Okay, so the rogue thing was really just to bring his audience in because he spends the rest of the time just talking about morph, it looks like. God, you suck, dude. I, uh... no, actually, I wanted to go and look at what else did he have. Oh, the woke shit thing, that's fun. Mm. Single Hassan destroyed by Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson. Sure, buddy. Sure. What the fuck? God, his, all of his thumbnails are just so fucking garish and awful. Like, ah. Uh. Oh yeah, no, this is, this is all he does. Yeah, no, the cute con candy cat, the, like, these cute, or these cute, these thumbnails genuinely make me angrier than the videos. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, my point is like, who is, there was somebody I was just going to look, oh, right, 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 okay. Um, I got, I got something that we can. Hey. Madam Web, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. That's not surprising. You don't seem like somebody who's seen a lot of bad movies. It's also, I, so I've been seeing a lot of people shit on Madam Web for rightfully for some stuff, but there's been some threads going around about weird line readings in the movie and all of the threads are cut to make lines that were jokes look like they were like serious or they cut off the rest of the scene or the punchline. And I want y'all to know that movie had a lot of really good joke, like line readings, like Dakota Johnson really brought it for some of that stuff. Um... <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, that was a dumb laugh. <laughs> Seeing his dumb face uh, makes me laugh. Here we go. Crystal Dynamics. This is the one I wanted to watch. One of the worst movies I've ever seen. Like, like seriously, look, he uses this picture of Sydney Sweeney's sized up tits, who plays a teenager in the movie, by the way. 
and like that's all he shows from the god his thumbnails fucking blow the witcher remake to remove outdated parts could it be because the first witcher game had you had sex with women and then your prize for that was essentially just like porn of them also the combat in that first witcher game is not good like try going back to the first witcher game it's fucking hard to play dude like witcher 2 is a lot easier to play witcher 1 is like <sighs> god like look the like lack of effort on these thumbnails 148,000 views for a thumbnail where it's just left aligned one font just over a picture of disney uh, it's so it's so easy to be a grifter like i don't think you understand like every day i'm out here struggling man <laughs> all right i do want to watch this though it seems like just based on these last six videos it seems like he's trying i guess it goes back a ways he really seems like he's trying to get on the uh the uh quartering grift oh yeah no um cute kind of candy cat how confused about how they're getting mad about doctor who being gay it has always been gay Th because they have never watched it i this this is the same phenomenon we saw in um the spider-man video i talked about where i talk about how they don't and, and you see it all the time go watch uh hey it's vadim's videos on the quartering because he lays it out so well uh how the quartering doesn't actually like watch or pay attention or know anything about the things that he gets people mad about but it drives clicks Uh, Crane was taken. Doctor Who was gay. I think Cute Kind Candy Cat meant more that, like, the fandom, the, the attitudes around Doctor Who has always been very queer, which is true. All right, so here's the thing. The Tomb Raider remakes, which I still haven't played. I've been meaning to. I actually started playing Tomb Raider Underworld again, and I'm on, like, the fourth or fifth level. Um, I love Tomb Raider. Those first four games, first five games... If you're including the lost the last adventure the last chronicles or croft chronicles the ones that were developed for the playstation one those games are you can't go back to them like i'm sorry you just can't they are i i'm looking forward i hope i'm proven wrong i do want to play this these remakes but they are rough to get back to um they also being based have very heavily in classic pulp adventure tropes have a lot of racist shit in them like a lot of racist stuff uh mostly having to do with like the way certain characters are depicted in almost caricature uh, i remember some of the asian characters being like that and it's like oh. um so the, i want you to guess personally for these new remasters, they just released uh, remasters of the first three Lara Croft games. What do you think, personally, if you were at home, they changed about this? That would cause right-wingers to get mad. About cutscenes that had maybe some insensitive stereotypes to them. I'm, I'm curious what you guys think. Oh, yeah. Uh, crazy fist like going back to vampire the masquerade bloodlines and meeting the chinese shop owner yeah breast shrank by one pixel each
Been going through Super Street Fighter 2 again. Dear God, are a lot of the endings racist? Yeah. Lars Tits. No, Lars Tits have not been changed. Uh, I think I think you will find, possibly unsurprisingly from Captain Pronouns here, it's a lot dumber of a thing to get mad about than you might think. In fact, it doesn't actually change Lara Croft anything. is back as the remastered versions of Tomb Raider 1 to 3 releases today. God, I, I try to... I at least try to spruce up my background a little bit more. His, his background... Not very good, dude. Anyway, whatever. However, Crystal Dynamics, the company that owns the license to Tomb Raider, absolutely hate them and want to disassociate themselves from them as much as possible. Why? Because they are faithful re... constructions and not some ESG DIE laden rubbish which we're used to with modern day gaming companies in the West. Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Now, as some of you may know, I'm quite partial to a little bit of video gam. And Tomb Raider just so happens to be one of my favorite franchises of all time. Is it because Lara Croft is a foxy, sexy, busty vixen? Well, partly, yes. Also, the gameplay of the Tomb Raider games was phenomenal. It was... I'm gonna, I'm gonna call a quartering on this and say he has not fucking played those games something really different back in the day excellent uh gary geiger what does esg mean um esg means oh god it's something i know what dei means there's diversity equity index esg is essentially the same thing or it's it they use it for the same cudgel but it is environmental social and governance scores um, and they essentially use it as a way to say that companies are trying to make everything woke. They're trying to insert wokeness into everything. And it's really, it's become, I don't know who's, I think it's part of Matt Walsh's like tirade against wokeness, but it's really become en vogue to talk about, like, especially in the last month or two. Puzzle solving, excellent combat, traversing areas, the action, the adventure, the sex in Again, much like the quartering, he'll just kind of sum up the game and just talk about a summary of it instead of... It, it's it's the same thing that fucking that ding-dong short fat otaku did. Uh, ooh, we should actually finish on a video of him. Um, a video that short fat otaku did where when he was talking about me, where he... Uh, like, it, it's mistaking summary for analysis you know like like just spending 20 minutes talking about the story but not actually analyzing what's happening or the how the parts interact at all um and that's kind of the same thing that they do here god his face is so unpleasant to look at as everything combined guess what made a single word which seems to be missing a lot today entertaining these games not only hold a very special place in my heart but they are literal video game history 28 years since the release of the first tomb raider game we are still talking about this franchise lara croft is still a relevant video game character maybe not quite the heights that she once had but is that the fault of her or is that the fault of other companies which have been dealing with her since like crystal dynamics what, what are you talking about <laughs> Thumb physiology. After years upon years of asking for remasters of the original games, finally it was granted. But was that more to do with Crystal Dynamics or more to do with the Embracer group taking them over? I think personally it's got to do with the latter and not the former, as the former were more interested in their trauma Laura. Yeah, Laura, not Lara, because it definitely wasn't Lara Croft, as opposed to who the character actually was and their personality. And oh my god, he's doing a Dante thing. It's like that's not Dante. It's it's, it's Laura Croft. It's not it's not my Laura. Like whatever, dude. Vations. The remastered versions look absolutely fantastic. There's a really clever function that allows you to toggle between the original versions of the game and also the new remastered Damn. versions of the game. So you can see exactly. It is. I will say I wish more games did stuff like this because uh, I, like this is kind of what the GTA trilogy did. Um, although that was just an actual mess. Um, I, there's something really fucking cool, though, about super high-res textures in low poly. Uh, or in, in still, like, in the, the environments are low poly and the character models have their polys bumped up a little bit. It's, I don't know, there's something, there's something I really dig about it.
exactly how things have been cleaned up and exactly how beautiful they are compared to how they used to be. Obviously a product of its time. The control system itself seems to have a couple of issues. You can go with the tank controls, which is the original set of controls, slightly clunkier, but definitely more control over the character. Or you can go with a new modern usage of the controls, which allows for much more fluid movement. However, also comes with its own issues as regards to traversing some of the environments. Like most games though, this is just a matter of getting used to them. And before you know it, you'll be fluid in no time. However, it's not Crystal Dynamics that made the remakes. It's a company called Aspire. And for all intents and purposes, they've made it as faithful as they could possibly be. Which in the era of the modern Western gaming company, ESG... So, already he said the remasters themselves are good. You can get used to them. They were as faithful as they could possibly be. What do you think he could possibly be complaining about at this point? They haven't changed anything. D D I E. That is simply not acceptable. When you initially boot up the game, you are greeted with this message. The game's... A this is it. 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 This is the only thing they did. They added a message at the beginning. That's it. We have chosen to present it here in its original form, unaltered in the hopes that we may acknowledge its harmful impact and learn from it, which is the correct way to do it. Do not censor art because it was made from a different time. Learn from it. Just because art is outdated does not mean you cannot learn from it. And, like, that that's, that's it. Like, that's, I can't, it. In this collection contain offensive depictions of people and their cultures rooted in racial and ethnic prejudices. I, I, look, I get that he's British, so, like, ruining other people's culture is kind of like his national pastime but here in the real world this is a very normal thing to put these stereotypes are deeply harmful and inexcusable and do not align with our values and crystal from the amazon calling yeah hi tribe from the amazon calling what's that you don't give a fuck what they say on twitter rather than removing this content we have chosen to present it here in its original form unaltered in the hopes that we may acknowledge its harmful impact and learn from it no the embracer group wanted to make money and told you to shut the fuck up and get on with it but that didn't stop the limp-wristed wet soft employee So, what the fuck are you saying? He's at Crystal Dynamics attempting to placate their ESG slash DIE gods. With okay, so he has he has no, pr but the ESG DIE thing, he just keeps saying that. He has no link or proof about that. This was probably a case of people going, hey, we can't like change, change a bunch of stuff about the game for obvious reasons. We can't like remake a cutscene from 28 years ago. But have you seen some of the shit? Cause ooh. like, yeah, we should probably put a warning. Okay, put a warning on boot. Problem solved, case closed. That's it, that's it. Last attempt at a monumental virtue signal from the pink haired Portlandian land whale current day Californian bullshit Western gaming company because heaven. Did he hang on? I want to go back and see something. Portlandian land whale current day Californian bullshit Western gaming company because heaven forbid people just act fucking normally nowadays. However, we are talking about an industry that's trying to placate these. <laughs> Yeah, okay, bring in something else that is, like, completely unrelated because you only have five minutes worth of content in your nine-minute video. God, dude. That's fucking sad. Um, do we want to end... with a video that Short Fat Otaku... He, he tagged me, like, a week ago, and I didn't respond... Um, and Thank very, you very much, everyone, for the 100... You dipshit. Uh, he very clearly wanted me to watch and react to this. Where was it? Uh, the Queer Problem. Do we want to watch The Queer Problem from Short Fat Otaku to end, end the day? Lady says no.
I know, Shield Thaden, he really loves the current day California shit! Uh, these freaks love to pretend that progressive values just kind of, Yeah, the California thing is so weird. I think, like, he just thinks California is, like, the left half of America. Do we want to? Yeah, I'll watch some of it. I... I don't know. Here's the thing. I just don't want... Like, I'm morbidly curious... Oh, this is the thing, Renaru, this is the th thing he tagged me on. Because he wanted me to react to his video. And I don't, I'm morbidly curious, as I am in most things, but I also don't want to keep giving him undue attention. And I don't want him to see and be like, you know, make another video on me or whatever. But I'm also very curious. Yeah, direct to storm skill, you're right. If they're asking for attention, avoid it. Like, I don't... I do not need his, like, anything, really. All right, let's have... Let's end with... Oh, I do want to watch that from Sam. Cut out of the stream highlights. No, I'm I'm not going to do stream highlights of this. Are you kidding? This one's just going up. This is five hours of nonsense. What are you talking about? Ooh, civil disobedience. Huh. What can Aaron Thompson say about that? <sighs> nah. I know. I love Sam's work. Sam is so fun. All right. Well, we'll listen to a little bit of it. We'll listen I, just because y'all have been good, and I haven't treated you to a, a hate church yeah, sermon right. well, in a minute. Ezra chapter number five, moving right along here in the book, and of course in chapter one we had the decree from Cyrus to build to rebuild the temple, and he gave all their stuff back from the temple. Thank you very much, Crazy Fist, for following. After the seventy years uh, of Jerusalem being laid to rest in its Sabbaths, after the prophecy of Jeremiah the prophet, and um, then we had the um, all the children of Israel go back to their ancestry homelands where they had already lived before, and we saw the uh, we saw the um, cornerstone being laid by the children. By they went back, they laid the cornerstone, they set up the altar. God, he has and just started such to, a uh, do what God way said with in the, words. In the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and of course, then the bad guys came and started to persecute them, and, and got in the last chapter they got them to stop building the. Uh, temple. They got them to stop the work by writing letters to the current king, not Cyrus. Cyrus had gone. Uh, you know, he, he was no longer the king anymore. And so I kind of preached last week about how the enemies, once you start doing something great for God and building things, then they'll come and, you know, they'll do all manner of things to try to stop God's work from being done. And it really kind of continues into this chapter, but uh, it's, it's, it's actually a pretty interesting chapter. I was thinking, what am I going to preach out of this chapter? But uh, when I sat down and started studying it, there's a lot of good stuff in here. So um, is there? my sermon title this, tonight is Civil Disobedience, because that's a uh, kind of a big portion of what I want to talk about, but uh, we'll, we'll start with our, my first point. Though my first point, there's only two points actually to the sermon. But the first point is uh, the work continues. Oh yeah, Swain, people are in the chat. And you know, people sometimes are God in, the chat. In, in a generation, and we see in this generation that God sets up a lot of great spiritual leaders for them, and they're leaders that are governmental leaders, <laughs> and also leaders. <laughs> Thank that are spiritual you very leaders. much, crazy. And sometimes fest. the government leaders are spiritual leaders, and so in this case, you have both. Look at verse number one. The Bible says, "Then the prophets, Haggai the prophet, right, and I'm going to skip forward and see if he gets us some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. He gave some. So." He gave some of the Old Testament too, though. He gave Ezra, didn't he? Isn't that what it said? That God gave Ezra? So God gives people that are spiritual leaders and people for the people and for the time that they're in. And, and it's, it, you know, you see this group of people that God sets up and he, and he kind of names them all. Haggai and Zechariah and Zerubbabel and Ezra. And then you got Nehemiah and all these great men of God that are for that generation. Why? Because they're needed. And because, you know, for such a time as that, for such a time that, that they needed them, God set them up. And, you know, God gives them because he knows that we need them. 
He knows that we need leadership. He knows that there's a, a great need for it. And it says, for what though? Verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the perfecting to get us to be the best we can be and for the work of the ministry, because the ministry, you know, people, I know that this is like a, a byword out in, in, in public or, you know, oh, pastors, all they, they just don't do anything. You know, they get up and preach once a week and that's all they do. I, I wish that's all it was, <laughs> but that's just not simply true. You know, really it's, you know, your, your, your time is invaded a lot. And, you know, but that's, the, that's what I've chosen to do. And so I, I don't complain about that. I'm just saying that that's just a fact. You know, but people think that, you know, maybe there is pastors that that's all they do. And I know that there's, there's churches around here and they have one service a week. How's that possible? How are you a pastor and you can actually collect a paycheck when you only have one service a week? And it's a 15 minute TED talk. How is that possible? But it is, but it happens. And some, if, if they have two services, they oh, have he talks fast service, because and I put, service and they preach the huh. same sermon. Okay, people asking why he talks so fast because I boosted the speed. Watch this. You want to know so misery? It's two 20 minute sermons and they just are perfecting the sermon that they already stole from some other pastor from years past or something. They're probably not even writing their own stuff in a lot of cases, you know? So. But it says for the edifying of the body this of Christ. This is normal. So this is normal. Is this God what you wanted? Is this has what you wanted? Appropriate leaders for the appropriate times. You got Abraham, Moses, Joshua. I mean, even Samson, as unspiritual he, as he was, they need, Samson was needed for the time that he came. Right? Samson came and he slew a thousand men with the job of an ass. God needed a, someone to to crack back on these bullies and he ended up killing them all in this, you know, in one big thrust. I mean, it's not exactly, you know, Samson didn't really fulfill God's plan the way he wanted it to, to happen, but he still fulfilled his plan, <laughs> whether you know, it was the way he wanted to do it or not. Even King Saul, you know, he came is this, is this a for little bit? such a time as, you know, the children of Israel said, we want a king like all the other nations. And okay, he still have. sounds drunk. Good. And so they rejected oh. <laughs> God as their king and chose a man as their king. And so God gave them the man that they deserved, didn't they? And Saul was good at first, but became bad, didn't he? <laughs> and then God said, well, here, I'll give you one after my own heart and gave him David. <laughs> oh my God. Take it in, internalize it and change whatever you need to change. But it's called being admonished. And it, it means to warn or notify of a fault to reprove with mildness. It could be to reprove with mildness, to counsel against wrong practices, to caution it or advise. I think I might have to listen to him at half direct. speed now. All right, let's, let's see how, how much and, worse we can make it. And in ecclesiastical affairs to represent, to reprove a member. <laughs> That's too close. That's too slow. the church for a fault. Reprove means to correct, right? To tell them they're wrong, either publicly or privately. <laughs> and to, publicly you know, or privately. Step, uh, uh, it could be the first step, could be of, the first church step discipline. of church discipline. It's followed by, of, or against, by, of, or against, as to admonish of a fault committed or against committing a fault. As to admonish a fault committed, committed against, or against uh, committing fault, and the default committing. Amen. Hallelujah. He's, yeah, like, it's very funny because he's not, when you slow it down, it becomes a lot less articulate, which is very good. Okay. Um, that, that's very good. Let's, all right, wait, who, do we have, God, it's been a long fucking stream. My throat is killing me. Do we have, are there any broskies streaming right now? I, here's my problem. All of my homies, all of my homies. All of the people I follow on Twitch are 
like they only are live either when I'm live or the other on the other coast. So like Shark, not live. Actual Jake, not live. Riverboat Jack, not live. Um, what was I gonna? Oh yeah, I want to send everybody out with with a good palate cleanser. You know, we've we've been through a lot today together, and. I'd like to share with you all the subtle, sultry, soothing sounds before we go of Steven Seagal's musical efforts. In his hit song, Me Want the Punani. To the Hasman Hotel soundtrack, and I'm like, what if this is the last song? Like, not a terrible soundtrack to listen to if it's the last thing you listen to before you die, but what if this was the last thing you listen to before you die? Anyway, I will leave you with that thought. Thank you all for uh for hanging out with us. And I hope